Hey guys, how's it going? Team Man Plays here with another Warno video for you today. And today's video is going to be a little bit different uh, than just a ranked game or a 10v10. We're going to be doing a tier list uh, video of all the divisions in the game. It's been requested a lot. I figured I'd finally get around to doing it. Uh, since I have played every single division in the game, I know kind of the strengths and weaknesses. I have a good idea of kind of where they should be on the tier list. Uh, so without further ado, the way that we're going to do it is uh, we're just going to start from the left here, go all the way down, and then go all the way down through here. Um, so we'll start with 11E, uh, talk about that, and then uh, get in uh, to first armored after. So we'll just switch to uh, the game view, and we'll pull up uh, the nice 11E Division Parachutus. And we'll talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of this division. Uh, so the logistics tab, pretty standard. Uh, nothing really here that you need to know. Uh, the infantry tab, one of the strengths of this division. Uh, you get pretty good flamethrower units. Uh, the only problem here is that the aim time on these guys, if you face RPO units, uh, they're going to get their shots on your flamethrowers earlier. Um, so RPO is still a little bit better than flamethrowers, uh, in my opinion. Um, but flamethrowers are still nice to have nonetheless, and they do come up at a nice uh, veteran experience level. Uh, and you can also get two cards of these to get eight of them total. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, come with a shock trait because all your units are airborne here. Uh, but your other nice unit to deal with those heavy tanks is going to be the Legionnaire Paris. Uh, because they have this nice Apelos launcher here. Uh, these guys also have the Resolute trait, which means they take less suppression in combat. And they also come with the shock trait and the forward uh, deployability of airborne troops. So you can get to really good areas nicely. Kind of help to hold that ground uh, with these guys. Uh, also, you get two cards of these Milan 2s, uh, which come with the 24 penetration. Don't exactly have the longest range, uh, but because they have good stealth, you can just kind of hide these guys around, uh, maybe get some side shots on some T-80BVs or some M1A1s, uh, whichever you're fighting. Uh, these guys do a lot of damage uh, because of that pen. Uh, for the early game, you also get uh, some airmobiles, that you can put in this Super Puma here. Um, it does generally get one passed by most fighters out there. Um, so you do got to be careful with that. Uh, you kind of don't really want to use these unless you have fighters of your own that can contest the air. Uh, as a late Super Puma drop uh, is going to get shut down uh, pretty easily now, especially with how good uh, even HMGs are at dealing uh, with these eight hit point helicopters. Um, so kind of recommend only really using these kind of mid, uh, I mean, early or early mid game area, uh, unless you have the air, uh, or, you know, your opponent is lacking a, uh, in a certain area, but you also get some group anti charts. I've never really been able to make these guys work too well, uh, cause they don't fare too well in infantry versus infantry fights. Uh, they still come in a good veterancy though, good availability. Um, so they are still good. Um, they will destroy heavy tanks very quickly if you can manage to sneak them on top of them, but I've never really had too much success with them. I, I have had success just with the Legionnaire Paris, though, uh, because these guys with their 10-man squad uh, versus the 7-man of the Anti-Char can actually uh, deal with opposing infantry uh, pretty well. Um, artillery tab, not really doing you any favors here. You at least get a pretty fast-firing uh, VLRA um, here uh, that you can smoke off uh, areas pretty quickly. Um, you also get the 105s, which are pretty decent at dealing uh, with infantry and buildings at the moment, uh, but no heavy artillery here. You're not really going to be counter-battering anybody. Uh, you're basically just using your, your mortars and artillery for uh, early offensive actions, um, and <laughs> probably not going to really have these 105s up late game unless you're very good at uh, reloading them and moving them around, uh, because your opponent will probably counter-batter you and you'll die. Tank tab, though, uh, you get some nice Sagais. The strength here is the mediocre stealth. Uh, the weakness is obviously the one armor. Not really going to be useful on head-on engagements. You want to sneak these guys along the side or hide them in tree lines. Um, basically, keep them out of sight of the opponent. Only advance them to get like a shot off, then reverse. Uh, just keep them hidden for as long as possible. You also get a lot of these P4 uh, Milan Paras, which have good stealth. Uh, these guys are really good at kind of holding the line um, in certain areas, basically forcing your opponent to artillery these or move up recon 
because they won't be able to move any heavy armor up or any IFVs as long as you have these P4s kind of sitting around and tree lines, and they're very hard to spot unless your opponent has recon. Uh, in terms of the recon tab, another strength in this division comes with the Paris SAS. Uh, these are special forces and shock. Uh, very good loadout. These guys are very good at dealing with opposing infantry. Um, they don't have any type of uh, LRAC or APILIS, uh, so you are going to struggle against vehicles. You want to make sure to have these guys close uh, to some type of chasseur squad uh, so you can deal with those IFEs to get close. But uh, these guys will pretty much melt any infantry squad uh, that you come against, and you get really good availability. You can get up to 12 of these guys, um, and I'd recommend taking them in this VLRA 50 cal uh, because the VLRA 50 is actually uh, pretty good for a 6 health uh basically 50 cal unit <laughs> it's very nice um at fire support as well you can just kind of run this around the map uh, cause your opponent some issues and this actually does good damage against helicopters now uh, so maybe if you uh, find a helicopter or a recon chopper just kind of flying around you can send this after it uh, in terms of other units that are pretty good uh, the vbl milan is pretty nice uh, if we just compare it real quick you can see the p4 milan paris uh, it's actually the same cost as the vbl milan but the benefit of the VBL Milan is you get very good optics, you still get the good stealth, um, and you still get the Milan too. And you get a machine gun added, and you get armor. So you can see there's a lot of benefits there over the regular P4. Uh, the only thing is you get nine of these, and with the VBL, you only get four. Uh, but you can still get two cards, get eight of these, and uh, I'd highly recommend that for this division, as you want as many... Uh, kind of Milan 2s as possible because you don't really have much to deal with uh, those heavy tanks effectively in terms of tanks of your own. Uh, the Lynx, uh, some people have made it work. I'm not really a huge fan of it because it's not a uh, kinetic weapon. It is a high explosive gun. Uh, so the closer you get here, the, this penetration doesn't go up. Uh, so I'm not really too much of a fan here uh, because in reality, you, you don't want this guy to get close. You want to keep him at that max range and the accuracy isn't really doing you any favors. Uh, you get uh, a nice little recon chopper here. Uh, but again, this is going to get one shot by a Fliegerfaust, an Igla, a Stinger, a Mistral, etc. Uh, so a plane can easily one pass this. Any type of ground AA is going to pretty much destroy this instantly. So you got to be extremely careful uh, with how you're using that. In terms of the AA tab, interestingly enough, uh, this 5.3 T2 20 mil can actually be garrisoned in buildings, uh, which makes it pretty good uh, due to the changes uh, to uh, helicopter armor. Uh, it can actually do a fair amount of damage now. They're still not that great, though, uh, because they do suffer on the accuracy front. Uh, but the, the, the pro here is you can just kind of put this in a building and uh, keep away any helicopters from that area because you will have that exceptional stealth. Uh, to go along with this and hiding in a building just firing out from the building um, you can kind of do uh, a lot of damage to helicopters that way make it a really a real pain for them to get rid of your your anti-air <laughs> um vlra 20 mils here i wouldn't really take these uh because they're not really going to have any staying power and the gun's not really good enough for offensive actions uh, you basically just want to use it defensively in, in buildings to uh, protect your infantry uh, mistral paris this is basically what you're going to be relying upon uh, for your air defense on the ground. Uh, missiles are really good, however, you only get four of them, so you're really lacking here. Uh, your your AA can kind of fall apart pretty fast, uh, even with these Pamelas here. Uh, this is your other kind of best AA unit, along with the Mistrals. Um, but as you see, you know, even if we do this, we only have 10 AA pieces, and uh, we're basically relying upon Pamelas and Mistrals. Um, so if you start losing AA, uh, it's going to get really rough if you're facing off against a helicopter division because then you're going to have to rely on planes. Um, in terms of helicopters, though, this division doesn't really get the best helicopters. Uh, the Puma Pirate's the only one I'd really recommend because it has more than the, the four hit points. Uh, it also has a little bit of ECM to kind of help it survive a little bit longer. Yes, it is 10 points more expensive than the Gazelle Cannon, uh, but for what you get for that extra 10 points, I think it's well worth it. Um, the the 20 mil Gatling isn't the best, uh, but it will at least do some damage uh, to kind of other opposing 
uh, recon choppers or, you know, infantry that's kind of overextended without proper AA support. You can just kind of send this to deal with backline action against foxes and whatnot. It will do the job there, uh, but you don't really want to use these guys on the front line uh, because they're not really going to uh, bring, bring you any value, uh, basically, unless you just kind of fully overrun your opponent. Uh, in terms of air, though, let's say all your uh, Mistrals go down, you at least have a card of the Mirage 2000C here. Uh, pretty good ASF uh, that can help you out. Uh, the Mirage FICs, though, or F1C, I guess, um, I don't know. I used to really like these, um, but recently I haven't really had much success with this plane. Uh, I've had it missing a lot of missiles where it felt like it should have hit. Uh, they seem to get shot down fairly easily. They do have good speed, um, so you can kind of use them to chase after opposing bombers and whatnot. Uh, maybe uh, get, the, get the hits that I cannot seem to find. Um, but you have six a ASFs total. Uh, they all have pretty good speed, too. Um, but again, if you lose your fighters and you lose your AA, uh, the rest of your game is pretty much over. So you got to be really careful uh, with how you manage that. And you kind of need to have all six fighters here uh, in your deck. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this division, though, is this LGB bomb bomber uh, because this is very good at dealing with opposing uh, heavy armor. You're kind of your best plane in this whole division. It's also extremely fast, uh, has pretty good ECM. Uh, so if if you're kind of you know keeping your opponent on his toes, maybe uh, he overextends with one of his tanks or whatnot, and you can just kind of pick it off uh, with these LGBs, and they do have an extremely low supply cost, so they uh, can fly around and uh, basically rearm repair extremely quickly. Uh, other things to deal with the heavy tanks, you got the Jaguar Cluster, uh, which is a very good plane. Uh, you also have this AT plane, which can be useful. Uh, the Napalm on this plane is still a little broken, so it can absolutely delete infantry. And the Jaguar HE, uh, always pretty decent as well. Uh, the Seed planes kind of hit or miss. They do have good ECM, um, but it's it, RNG is a, a very heavy factor whether you're going to hit with this Martell or not. <laughs> uh, but depending on what you're going for, it might be useful to take. Uh, but with that being said, uh, we'll just go back to our kind of tier list here. Um, I think basically uh, the main weakness of 11E is its air tab. Oh, not its air tab. It's AA tab. And the fact you don't really have any heavy tanks, uh, you're not really going to have a lot of staying power because once your opponent gets artillery up, they're just going to be able to kind of hit all your Milan 2s. Your Sagai is not really able to take any frontal engagements, so once they kind of cover off their flanks, you're not really able to sneak Sagai's through anymore. Uh, you lose all the momentum there. I love playing this division. I used to love playing this division. Uh, however, I think it's a C-tier division. I don't really think you have a lot of the key components there to make it just a good all-rounder. It requires a very specific play style, and if your opponent... Uh, kind of sees what you're doing. They're able to get a solid lineup. You're not really able to sneak through anymore. It's very hard to actually make offensive plays uh, with this deck. So I'm going to put it in C tier. Uh, but with that being said, let's go into third or first armored uh, now. So first armored, unlike 11E, actually gets a really solid uh, tank tab. Get a lot of these... Uh, Chieftain Mark 9s, Mark 11s, Challenger 2s. I can see you get two cards of that, two cards of that, five cards of these Challenger Mark 2s. You even get two cards of uh, Mark 3s, which is the new uh, Challenger with the ERA uh, added on. Uh, so pretty nice uh, there. But, well, I don't really know where I was going with that, but <laughs> you get all these, all these nice medium tanks. Uh, it's pretty much like the new... It plays the way that the old uh, 7th Panzer used to play with the T-72s. You just play with a lot of these uh, medium tanks. And then, unlike 7th Panzer, you actually have uh, these heavy tanks that you can kind of show up later and uh, hold those key areas, even make uh, you know a push against uh, opposing players' heavy tanks. You also get these uh, really nice Rover Milan Paras, uh, which are forward-deployable uh, Milan 2 vehicles. Uh, so that's pretty nice. You can get plenty of those. Wouldn't really bring the striker or the swing fire. Um, but you get heavies, you get mediums, uh, and you get 
the rovers uh, to basically help uh, with those engagements. Logistics tab, though, just heading back for a minute, pretty standard. Uh, the only problem is here is you don't have that cheap 20-point uh, supply truck, so you've got to pay a, a little bit more uh, for your to bring out your supply. However, uh, it's actually cheaper over time because the 20-point one only brings 500 uh, supply, and you're basically paying 35 points for 1,000 supply, so five points of uh, extra value. you just got to pay a little bit more uh, for it. In terms of the infantry tab, though, you do get some pretty good infantry because of these uh, light support weapons. Uh, these are very good um, to have. Makes their infantry uh, quite powerful. Uh, you also get the Law 80, which is very good against vehicles. Uh, the only thing that the infantry is lacking here is you don't have any type of flamethrower or RPO style unit. Uh, so you're not really going to be faring too well in those close range battles uh, against things, you know, like Sapuri RPO, Spetsnaz, uh, any flamethrower units really going to mess you up uh, because all you really have anti-infantry wise is just these satchel charge units. Uh, the one thing that's really good though, you at least have the SAS patrol, uh, which is, you know, oddly enough, your, your best uh, <laughs> close range uh, infantry because they come with these submachine gun MP5s. They also come with a satchel charge. Uh, so kind of oddly enough, you want to use these as like your close range infantry. Uh, at least I would recommend that. Um, and then maybe support them with just rifle squads. Uh, you can get some armed rifles and warriors to help out there. Uh, but the other thing is you really need to keep these alive uh, because this is also what makes this division so strong, you don't want to lose these SAS patrol uh, because those are the eyes for all your armor. And it's really nice having a GSR um, unit in a tank division uh, because you can get exceptional optics on these guys uh, as long as they're standing still. And that'll help you just spot whatever you need. Uh, really good recon unit there. Uh, but the infantry tab. Uh, you do get, you know, obviously the Warriors and all that, which will help you. Uh, you can pump out IFEs. Uh, you can just pump out good infantry. Uh, but the only problem where you're going to struggle is in things like towns uh, that are contested uh, and things like forest uh, where there's other opposing uh, RPO units or flamethrower units. You're really going to struggle to kind of make ground there. Uh, so you kind of want to stay more out in the open uh, where you can actually use like your supporting weapons, like your tanks and your, your Warriors to really help you. Uh, with those engagements. The other cool thing about this division is these uh, Terrier Paris and the Terrier Paris Carl G. Uh, you actually get these guys uh, forward deployable, so they come with the airborne deployment. So you can kind of contest uh, areas early on the map. Uh, you got to kind of have an ASF up if you're going to send these guys uh, kind of as far as, as far as they can go at the start. Uh, you want to have like a tornado up or something, but uh, you can at least contest those areas early which is always nice for a tank division as well. In terms of other recon, though, uh, the Fox can be very good for sneaking behind the lines, uh, but as soon as this is spotted uh, by even another IFE, uh, it's going to go down pretty quickly. Uh, it's basically only good for picking off like AA units, uh, maybe artillery if you can find them, uh, maybe a CV that's in the back of a zone or something, because uh, they do have really good speed. So they are pretty good units, um, but they do get picked off pretty easily when spotted. You also get this nice uh, Scouts Law 80 unit. Uh, Law 80, pretty good AT. Um, and the Scimitar, or the Scimitar, I guess I should say, uh, is also a pretty decent unit because it just has more armor uh, than the Fox. It's five points cheaper. You get uh, 10 hit points instead of the eight hit points. It just doesn't have the speed, uh, but still a pretty good unit just to have to maybe poke through the lines, uh, see if you can pick off some of those rear line units. In terms of AA, uh, going to be relying on these basically tracked rapiers and javelin LMLs. I don't really bring in the javelin because I'm mainly just using the javelin LML. I find a lot more value in the LML because it's, well, first off, you get uh, nine ammunition and uh, you're able to fire off uh, with a salvo length of three here. Um, so you can fire off, you know, three rounds fairly quickly compared to like a regular javelin that has to reload every 10 seconds. Um, so these guys are actually really good at dealing with helicopters. They're a very good anti-helicopter unit. 
and uh, the track rapier. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it's not the best AA uh, because it is manually guided and not fire and forget, but it, it still somewhat does the job. Um, so not, not too much to complain about there. Uh, in terms of the helicopter tab, hell arms are uh, very nice to have. Very, pretty cheap helicopter. That's six hit points. Uh, even though it's only 20 penetration, these guys can really help kind of deal with anything uh, in the back line, or you can just kind of poke them up uh, towards the front because they do have the ITO. Uh, they do a lot of suppression. Uh, so it's pretty nice just to have them kind of deal with uh, some of that uh, lower tier armor or whatnot, or even against heavy tanks, you can just kind of put them behind uh, your chieftain or your challenger, uh, really help kind of win those engagements as long as the opponent's A uh, isn't too close. And then the gazelle rockets always like, uh, because these guys can be kind of really devastating on an opener. Uh, they're super cheap. Uh, they can basically kill infantry and transports, um, and you can get up to six of them at the start. Uh, it's only a 120-point investment, and you're basically slowing down your opponent's uh, forward deployability. Uh, so that's always nice to have. The other good thing about first, you get two cards of these Tornado F3s, uh, which are really good uh, ASF fighters. Uh, you get exceptional air optics with these, 30% ECM, eight uh, total missiles for Skyflash for M9s. Uh, so these can really kind of help you to control the sky, and you get plenty of them at four. Um, Harriers, also pretty good. Super cheap bomber. Uh, it is only eight hit points now, so anything with an IHawk or a Kub or a Book, going to one-tap these guys. Uh, but against divisions that don't have those, you can pretty much just air spam them to death uh, with the bombers because you'll have these bombing Harriers here. You'll have the cluster to go after uh, your opponent's heavy armor. You get three per card on these. Uh, you also have a really good bomber here that can kind of mess up heavy tanks or mess up AA or mess up infantry. Um, you have a card of seed, uh, which is okay. wouldn't really recommend it too much, though, because if you have uh, any opponent that has somewhat of a brain, unlike me, that micros their AA, uh, they can pretty much shut down your seed, uh, not really make it worth its time. Um, but plenty of good bombers here, good ASF. Uh, this is it can very much turn into an air spam division. And I've played against people that have played it that way, and it is very, it feels very, very bad. You feel like they just have so many planes, and you're just constantly getting bombed. <laughs> it's it's not fun to play against, uh, but I'm sure it's fun to play, and it, it's part of what makes uh, third armor pretty strong. So if we just go back to our tier list here, and we'll place third armored. I'm going to place it as an A tier, uh, not S tier because the infantry, uh, I think that's really kind of what keeps it away from being an S tier division. Because if you do get caught up in a town fight or in a forest fight, uh, you're not really going to fare too well. Sure, you can rely upon your bombers, uh, but if your opponent has something like a Kub or a Book, um, or they get, just get a bunch of uh, ASFs themselves, they keep control of the sky, you're going to really struggle uh, in those kind of fights. But Everywhere else, uh, this division seems to kind of excel. Uh, they're really good on that kind of medium to open terrain, and uh, they can get tons of chieftains up. That can be really, really hard to deal with, uh, even if you have a heavy tank. You know, uh, even even a heavy tank is going to struggle when you're facing uh, you know four or five chieftains that are all stacked together. <laughs> so uh, it, it can get out of hand very, very quickly. This division's very good at snowballing, uh, but I think that infantry. Uh, in the towns and forests kind of keeps them back uh, for certain maps like Black Forest specifically. Uh, but with that being said, we will hop in to second Panzer. So, second Panzer. Obviously, very good logistics tab. You have plenty of supply options here, plenty of command options. Uh, you can give me three of these armored sultans. Uh, in terms of infantry, uh, I think that's kind of where these West German divisions uh, really suffer. Uh, that just the infantry, it's it doesn't it doesn't feel very good to me. Um, I feel like they're just always getting outcompeted uh, versus other nations. Like uh, the French infantry feels like they can just completely demolish. Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, the American infantry feels like they can demolish Panzer Grenadiers. 
uh, even just going up against the Moto Shoki squad uh, seems like an absolute pain. It's just, maybe it's just my opinion, but whenever I play these kind of West German divs, I always feel like my infantry is just really suffering, uh, especially these FS Jaeger. I don't really think these guys are worth it at all, even though they come with the Panzerfaust three with the 21 uh, AP here. Uh, it's just their cost uh, and their, basically their weight in points versus other units, like a squad of commandos versus an FS Jaeger. Even if the commandos are out in the open and the FS Jaeger in a building, it still feels like you're going to lose. <laughs> it just, I feel like I've had that situation happen before and it's just, it's not, it's not a good feeling. I never feel like these FS Jaeger are good. Um, mainly because they, I mean, they don't get a special forces trait like the commandos would. Um, they just seem too expensive for what you're getting, and they don't really seem to give you any value. The one thing that the West Germans do kind of succeed in, though, is just absolute manpower, as you get, you know, 11 strength squads here, uh, and you can just really just keep pumping out loads and loads and loads of infantry. So you, you can you can overwhelm your opponent uh, with infantry. You won't really run out of infantry, uh, which is always nice. It just doesn't seem like you want to really take any one on one engagements. Uh, you want to just have the numbers and you want to just have overwhelming numbers. Um, Pioneer flams, not the best, uh, but it is uh, at least okay. Uh, they still do a good amount of damage to other infantry. You can stun them up uh, and kill them that way. Um, get plenty of Milan twos. Uh, you also get a forward deployable option here. Uh, the only good thing about these FS Jaeger is that they're a forward deployable uh, but I, I still don't know. I still don't feel like they're they're really worth uh, taking just because they seem to <laughs> not fare too well in infantry engagements. Um, and then, obviously, you get a lot of IFE options with your standard Panzergrenadier Martyrs. Uh, you can take, you know, the five-front armored version or the four-front armored version. Uh, I think I'd recommend just taking the one with the four-front armor uh, because something like a Metis uh, won't be able to one-tap this um, it also won't be able to one tap the five armored one, uh, obviously. Uh, but for five less points, you're just paying for a little bit less armor. Um, but I don't really think you need the five front armor, anyways. Uh, so I, I, I'd rather just you know keep it a little bit cheaper. Another good thing about the West Germans, though, is that they really excel with their artillery tabs. You can get some heavy hitters here, uh, like these M110s. Uh, these are pretty nice. You can also get some really cheap. Uh, good heavy hitting artillery with the 155s. Uh, those are always pretty nice. And you get a pretty decent 120 mil mortar here with the Panzer Morser. Um, so you got a lot of options. You can even do some MLRS uh, type stuff uh, if you want to go that route. Uh, if you don't want to have the stationary arty, uh, you can you know go for the mo more mobile version. Uh, that's always beneficial. Wouldn't take the Lars too. This isn't too great. Uh, also, wouldn't really worry about the Tempella. I just take the Panzer Morser. Uh, that way you have the more survivability in case your opponent does decide uh, to counter Artie. Uh, that way you can just keep your mortars alive pretty easily. In terms of the tank tab, uh, these M48s are actually pretty good because they come with the 50 cal. Um, for 55 points, it's basically you know just kind of like a, a, an upgraded Martyr IFE except uh, with a tank gun. Um, so they're pretty, pretty good. Uh, just kind of think of them as like an IFE, uh, even though it's a light tank. And I just kind of use them as like an, a, a, an IFE type role uh, because they're not really going to do too well uh, on tank on tank battles. Uh, but these against other opposing IFEs uh, can pretty much earn value that way. Uh, Leopard 1A1A1s, not too bad themselves. Uh, they do only have the 2100 meters though. And that's why you kind of take the 1A5s uh, because they have that full max range they also have really good static and motion accuracy so you can keep these guys on the move and uh, keep them engaging get two cards of these leopard 2a3s uh, which are very good to have uh, because you want to have these heavy tanks in this division uh, for those maps that have a little bit more open terrain uh, you can maybe use these uh, to uh, advance in those areas and you also get a command card of the 2a3 as well uh, which is also pretty nice but basically, you're relying upon a lot of light tanks here, a lot of mobility um, to catch your opponent out. In terms of the recon tab, uh, Luke's can be pretty good for backline action uh, at the start of a game. Uh, Jaeger Afklar, good little high HP uh, recon squad. Get the Scimitar again. 
uh, which is pretty good for just kind of a, you know, mid game unit kind of trying to punch the line somewhere. And then these FS Jaeger are uh, pretty good uh, with their Panzerfaust three, uh, just catching uh, out units at the start because they do have that forward deployability. In terms of the AA, you get the IHawk, uh, which is nice. Uh, this can really help against uh, like what we were just talking about with first armored. Destroy those Harriers in one hit because they have the 9 HE. Uh, also pretty decent accuracy. Uh, the Geppard, pretty good at dealing with helicopters. Uh, not so much planes unless it's a low-flying plane like an A-10 or an Su-25. Uh, these also do have smoke on them as well. So if you're kind of caught out in the open with your AA, uh, and attack planes coming, just smoke off your Geppard. Uh, that way you can keep them alive. Um, and then your Flager Faust, just a really cheap uh, surface-to-air missile unit. Uh, basically, just kind of spam these guys around. One Flager Faust is not really going to be too beneficial. Uh, two, three, even four uh, Flager Faust going to have a lot better time uh, dealing with helicopters that way. Your own helicopters, uh, you just got these little bow paws. Um, do have pretty good penetration. Uh, the Bopa 1A1 has good accuracy uh, on its 24 pin uh, hot two, um, but you know you're not really going to be using these guys too much, um, except for maybe uh, you know catching a stray vehicle out or something. These aren't really attack helicopters. They have no rockets, just the hots, uh, so you don't want to really be using these guys aggressively. In terms of the planes, uh, you do get like first armored. Uh, the two cards of Tornado F3s, really good ASF. Uh, you get a good little assortment of AT planes. I've actually found these F104Gs uh, to be pretty decent uh, because this accuracy, even though it says 35% here, it actually scales up the closer you get to the target. And because of this speed, uh, this plane actually gets really close uh, to the target. So you'll find that this actually, actually increases uh, quite a bit before the missile uh, even hits. Uh, which can lead to some interesting situations where you're one tapping uh, T80 BBs, uh, and that's you know an instant value uh, for this for this plane. Uh, it's especially good on really open maps where the speed's going to come in handy, like airport. Um, but it it's also kind of hard to spot for your opponent if they don't have uh, like any heavy duty radar AA up that can kind of spot these early because that speed is very fast. Uh, they'll also uh, uh, it's, it'll lead to situations where you're basically just getting the air alert. You see the plane, and it's fired off the missile, and you don't really have time to smoke uh, before this missile approaches unless you're just really uh, on your game. Uh, Gina's still pretty good at dealing uh, with, like, helicopters and stuff. I just, because they only have the six max damage now, they get shot down really easily, so I don't really feel like uh, they're too worth it anymore. Tornado IDS, also another good little AT plane if you don't feel like uh, taking the F-10. Uh, this thing is good at dealing with helicopters. It's also good at just heading on other planes. I've had situations uh, where this tornado has taken out uh, like Mirages, for example, and head-ons. Uh, it's pretty good at that because it comes with the AM-9L. Uh, the front little nose gun here, also pretty decent. It has good ECM itself. Uh, and it has excellent agility. Uh, so it's pretty good at just basically as a multi-role <laughs> plane as well um, in combination with the F3. Uh, something like the Tornado IDS, it kind of drops from high, but it's still good at just destroying buildings. Uh, if you don't want a building in a certain situation, I wouldn't re really recommend the cluster version. Uh, the Tornado IDS, I uh, would recommend this though. Uh, the price has come down. Um, it's actually really good at dealing with large clumps of infantry. If your opponent... Uh, you know, sending a wave across, you see a bunch of infantry out in the open uh, or in a group, or you know there's a high-value uh, target in a building somewhere. You want to make sure uh, that it goes down. This Tornado IDS uh, is definitely the way to do that. Just fire position wherever you want it to go uh, so that it actually drops the bomblets. And, uh, yeah, this will pretty much clear uh, whatever it drops on uh, infantry-wise. Uh, but I do think it is definitely a solid plane. And we'll just switch it back to our tier list now. And if we want to play 2nd Infantry, I think 2nd uh, Infantry is a B-tier division. Um, I don't really think you get enough like heavy tanks uh, to compete with a division like 1st. 
Uh, first armor is going to be pretty much second panzer in any type of uh, tank engagement, uh, unless you can really kind of outplay them with the Leopard 2A3s. Uh, the infantry just always seems to be lacking. I feel like first armored wouldn't even struggle uh, dealing with uh, a bunch of Panzer Grenadiers or Jaegers. Uh, I feel like that would be no problem. Uh, I feel like the air tab is at least somewhat decent, uh, which keeps it at a B tier. Um, you know, you, you still get a lot of infantry, so you're not really going to run out of anything. You get good AA. Uh, you get uh, kind of an assortment of tanks, a lot of more light tanks than the heavy 2A3s. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't really see anything it super excels at, uh, but I think it's still playable. I think it still can be fun to play. I just don't think it's quite up to the level of A tier. I just, I, I see it as kind of a B tier, uh, only division here. Uh, but with that being said, let's start talking about second infantry. So, 2nd Infantry, pretty good, just standard uh, logistics tab. In terms of actual infantry, your mainstay is going to be these SAS, uh, because they have the AT4s and the Stingers. Uh, you want to basically just use all six of these uh, for whatever opener you're going for. Uh, this division, in my opinion, has the best opener of any division in the game. I think it's super easy to just get to good areas uh, your opponent has to really think about how they want to deploy because of these SAS. Um, so it can it can lead to some interesting scenarios, uh, but they really fall off kind of late game. So they're really good early game. Uh, mid game, you're just trying to hold the ground for as long as possible. You're maybe getting some Challenger 2s up and whatnot, but towards late game, your, your, your whole combined arms has just basically fallen apart, and you're just hoping you can win before time runs out. <laughs> um, but... In terms of infantry, SAS can be solid. Uh, you have really cheap terriers that you can use uh, to just kind of run around. Uh, the airmobiles, I never really find worth it because, like, unless you're using these lynxes at the start uh, to get your airmobiles in good positions, you don't really want to use the Saxon uh, because at the end of the day, this is costing you 20 points. Uh, sure, it has a medium machine gun. Sure, it has smoke, uh, but you can't sell this transport. So this 20 points is just going to sit there, and you're not really going to know what to do with it except maybe just feed it to the uh, opposing player because you don't really have any use for it, and this medium machine gun's not really going to do much in the way of fire support uh, to, to do you any favors and help you win the game. Uh, so it seems just kind of a waste uh, to use that. So I've started using kind of just Jaeger squads where I can resell this 20-point uh, unit. Uh, even though I've talked about you know how bad that West German infantry is, uh, I still feel like I'd rather have a 50-point Jaeger squad where I can at least sell... Uh, a 20 point transport to get uh, something back there than paying 10 more points for air mobile and then paying another 20 points. So basically you're paying 80 points now instead of the 50 here because you can't resell this transport. So I feel like the value maybe is uh, a little bit better uh, for the Jaeger there. <laughs> but uh, in terms of other things, you get the Milan too. Uh, you don't really have any good anti-infantry besides just the SAS with these C8 uh, submachine guns here because um, your best thing it's just these uh, little uh, satchel charge units. Other than that, so if you're going against RPO and all that, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna start struggling. You do get IFEs though, uh, which is really nice with second. You kind of want to use these as like your medium tanks uh, in this division. In terms of artillery, you get really nice cost efficient uh, 155 mils. You also get the 105s if you just really want to go cheap. Um, and then you get some mortars too. Uh, you also get some really heavy hitting artillery, uh, which can be nice uh, depending on kind of how you're building this deck as well. In terms of tanks, uh, you get plenty of Milans. Uh, you get these nice 24-pin Rover Milans as well. Uh, you can get some M48s, uh, but these are the ones that don't come with the 50 cal. I don't really think they're worth it. I'd rather just go uh, with the two Challenger Mark II cards and then just the Command Mark II and then maybe uh, some of these Rover uh, Milans as well. In terms of recon, you also get the foxes, which we've talked about how these can be used. Uh, you get pretty good value airmobile scouts, uh, which come with a lot of assault rifles, light support weapons, and medium machine gun. Um, so these guys are just good value for 45 points, um, cheaper than a Jaeger squad, and basically going to put out tons of uh, suppression and damage. 
Uh, the only problem, again, though, you got to pay this 20-point tax on the Saxon, uh, which I just don't really like. really wish you could sell these back. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, you're only spending 65 points still, though, uh, which is still pretty good value uh, because this is only a 45-point unit, whereas if you, you know, compare it to something uh, like this Jaeger squad, you can kind of, you know, see uh, some of the differences in DPS and all that. Uh, it's just a really good value for that 45 points uh, versus the 60 point Jaeger off clear. In terms of AA, you have two cards of these Javelin LMLs, which in combination with the SAS, you'll really shut down uh, any type of helicopter uh, play towards you. Uh, you have Rapier FSAs, although I wouldn't really recommend taking these because as soon as these fires, uh, they can basically get artilleried and uh, die pretty quickly. Um, so you kind of want to rely on this tracked rapier and just your javelin LMLs and your SAS. Uh, you get tons of hell arms, really cheap activation slots here. So you want to bring a lot of hell arms in uh, to basically support you all over the map. You also get the same thing as first here uh, with these gazelle rockets, which can be really nice at uh, dealing with just early uh, infantry transports at the start, kind of cutting your opponent off. Uh, if he doesn't have a plane up, these can basically do damage, then you can pull them back to uh, resupply and then use them again. Uh, in terms of the air tab, uh, it's not my favorite. Not really a huge fan of these Phantom F3s. Uh, people have told me they're great. People tell me they love them. I'm not the biggest fan. I don't think they're that great. Uh, so I try not to really use them too much, but in a division like this, you kind of at least maybe want to have one card of these uh, so you can at least bring them out in a pair. I wouldn't really bring one of these out at a time uh, because it will get shot down. It doesn't have guns, just has Sky Flash and Aim 9Ls. Um, so I kind of only want to bring these out in a pair uh, if you're going to use them. You do, however, get really good cluster planes. You get two cards of these uh, clusters as well. Uh, you also get a really good bomber here uh, that can help you out on the ground. Tornado Bomber, also not too bad itself. Uh, if you want to go that route, uh, it does drop a little higher, though. But uh, because it gets sick of these bombs, it's really good at just uh, hammering targets and buildings and whatnot. Really good for that. Uh, and you also can go the really cheap route and get the uh, Harrier Bomber as well, uh, which is pretty nice. But in terms of where we put this on the list, if we go back to our tier list here, I think second imp is actually in the A tier. Uh, just like first armored, uh, I'd put it. I'd put it in A tier, but I I wouldn't put it above first armored. So it goes behind first armored. Um, I think it has the strongest opening of any division in the game. Uh, you can have some really really great openers there. It just it really starts to fall off towards that late game. But because your open is so strong, it can force people literally just to surrender and not want to play the game out. Um, also, you you can just snowball very quickly from your open because you have such a great open to where you can just establish such a dominant position that it's going to, it's going to take a lot for your opponent to get even just get back in the game after that. I'm sure there's things that can go wrong and all that. Uh, if you're not aggressive enough with your opener, uh, it's not going to lead to uh too well of a situation. Uh, but as long as you have the right amount of aggressiveness, uh, your open goes well, it's kind of hard for it to go wrong with second. Uh, with the SAS, um, I think you can have a pretty pretty good day uh, with this division, and that's why I'm, I'm putting it at A tier. So next division, 35Y. Hop into that. So 35Y. Um, you get a lot of command options here. You also get your forward deployable uh, little Jeep here. Uh, you get really good supply options. One of the weaknesses, though, I think, is this little UAZ supply uh, because you are kind of paying a five-point tax here uh, because of this advanced deployment uh, trait. So it can be kind of supply expensive if you're just buying uh, these UAZs. So you kind of want to rely on more of these uh, helicopter supply units. Uh, this one specifically to resupply all your helicopters. Um, and then... This one may be for your more frontline tanks and whatnot, but if you're using them not the best and getting them shot down, uh, that's where you're going to have to bring in these UAZs, uh, especially if you want to get like resupply to infantry and cities and all that. So you, this five-point tax uh, per Jeep can kind of add up over time. 
uh, but it's not really a big deal in the grand scheme of things because other parts of this division are extremely strong, such as the infantry tab, uh, where you have two cards of these Spetsnaz, uh, one of my favorite uh, infantry units in the game just because of how strong they are with the special forces and the shock trait, uh, the AKSUs, uh, the double PKM, the RPO, uh, just a fantastic unit. You pair this with a Spetsnaz OP and you can pretty much deal with infantry and any type of IFE or even heavy tank uh, that comes up against your little combined uh, units there. Another good unit, uh, the Desaniki DSH, uh, because these guys now get the shock trait. Just kind of put these guys in MI8. Uh, they have six of these RPG rounds. Uh, they also have pretty just good standard stats. Uh, they come at veteran. You get nine of them. Uh, these can, guys can be really good at just kind of establishing uh, forward positions at the start of a game. Uh, the Spetsnaz Commander, also not bad if you have the room for it uh, because it does have the AKSU instead of the standard uh, AK. So uh, you can do a lot of damage uh, with this. They also come with the Dragonov and the RPG-26, so a really good command unit. Uh, it's also a special forces unit, uh, really good for offensive uh, actions, but you don't really need it too much in, in this because you should have enough space to where you don't really need to bring in uh, the command infantry. You can just bring in a Jeep or uh, something like that. Um, the Desenaki BMDs, uh, very good. I take them in the BMD. D1P, uh, because you get this 17 penetration Factoria, which can kill any type of IFE with three front armor. Uh, eventually, I probably will take them in this BMD2, uh, but right now, the PKT is actually bugged uh, to where it takes rounds away from your Conquerors, so this unit isn't really working correctly at the moment. Uh, so that's, that's why I take them uh, in this BMD1P. But whenever that's fixed, probably going to take them in the BMD2, because then you get the auto cannon. Uh, and the Conquerors here, and that's a really uh, deadly combination, uh, especially just for a decent infantry squad uh, that comes at Veteran already with 9 availability. Uh, you can also just go the regular route if you don't want the IFE or anything, but I think it's definitely worth it to have that in. Uh, Afghanski, never really found a good use uh, for these guys, so I don't really take them because I don't really find situations where I'm like, oh man, I wish I had Afghanski here. I never really, never really said that to myself. Uh, so I don't really think about or take these guys. Uh, what I do think about a lot, though, is the two cards of the Desaniki Metis. Uh, it's really nice to have both cards of those. Uh, these Metis teams, because they have the 17 uh, penetration, can take out anything with three front armor or three side armor if you hit them in the side. A uh, really just good unit to kind of just cover uh, all areas of the front line uh, because you have these 1750 uh, meter here of range. Uh, you can really just cut off a lot of what your opponent is trying to do or sneak through you and uh, put these guys in a building and really hold down that area of the map. Uh, you also get, you know, two cards of Conquerors if you really want it, but I just kind of use the Metis as I would a Conquerors. And then I use uh, other units to kind of send out the more uh, damage like your uh, Kulas or your attack helicopters or just your T-80s or not T-80s, T-64s uh, that we'll get into in a second. Uh, artillery tab have pretty good selection here. Uh, I really like these MTLP Vasilix. Uh, both cards of these, very, very good unit. Can deal a lot of damage uh, to units. And, well, if you think about it, even six of these is only going to be 360 points. Uh, so you're not really spending a whole lot here for the amount of damage uh, that you can do. The only problem with the Vasilix is that the supply cost is uh, quite a lot. You run out of ammunition very quickly. Uh, so that's where something like this MI-26 is going to come in handy uh, when you need to resupply all your Vasilix, uh, because that will definitely happen if you're firing these guys off uh, a lot during the game. You will definitely run out of ammo very, very quickly, and it's, you're going to realize it's quite draining on your supply. But because this division has a pretty good amount of supply, uh, especially with these MI-26s, uh, you can really afford just to fire those uh, all game. Uh, Nona's never really find them to be that great. Uh, you you can use smoke on this. Vasilix don't have smoke. Um, so you kind of want something to smoke. Uh, and that's kind of where you can use these Nona's. Or you can just go really cheap. Uh, use the mortar uh, for the smoke. And then the other card of Vasilix here, I wouldn't take these. Uh, because you're getting a tracked uh, Vasilix here that you can keep mobile. Don't have to worry about counter artillery like you would uh, with this unit. And then if you just kind of want something 
uh, to destroy buildings from range uh, or infantry and buildings from range. I can go with something like this, but I find you can just kind of keep these fast licks behind wherever you're wanting to push and just do it that way uh, for a lot more efficiency. In terms of the tank tab, uh, this is also another strength of this division. You can get some T-64Bs. Uh, you can even get some T-64BVs, uh, which is a very good heavy tank with that 17 front armor. And the Agona uh, with the 21 pin. And then you also get uh, two of these T-64 BVKs. Uh, so very, very nice heavy uh, command tank as well. You can also go with something like the UAZ Conquers. Uh, but I find you don't really need these because you'll already have all these Metis teams just kind of scattered around. Um, and they, they give you a lot more value than the 70 points for the, uh, for the Conquers would. Uh, even though it does have good stealth and everything, I just... I never really find a situation where I'm like, man, I wish I had that UAZ Conquerors right here. <laughs> so for the Recon tab, another really good area of this division, you get Spetsnaz GRU, which is your exceptional optics GSR unit. Uh, also very pretty good at just uh, dealing with other opposing Recon units. MI-24K, uh, you can use this kind of at the open, uh, or if you don't really want to risk it at the open, you can just bring it in later for behind the lines action, uh, really clear up. Uh, anything behind your lines or just really help you push uh, an area as it is an armored recon helicopter and then you can just get you know some Osroads Vecca uh, that you can bring in if you want something uh, Helleborn or if you want to bring it in at BMP or you can just get your standard uh, De Sunrez Vecca wouldn't really recommend uh, any of the vehicles here in terms of AA uh, the ZU-23 here very very good at dealing uh, with opposing helicopters, uh, especially even armored helicopters. Uh, two of these uh, do a really nice job uh, against uh, even an Apache uh, that you're dealing with. As long as you kind of catch it out, uh, you're likely to win that battle. So very, very good unit, uh, especially with the forward deployability. Uh, you can really protect kind of your start uh, with these. You can also protect it with some Iglis, but if you come up against... Uh, some type of helicopter rush from your opponent, you're really going to wish you had these ZU-23s uh, to help you out with that. Still not really a fan of the Afghanski. Don't bring that. Uh, the Strela, more of a kind of late game unit, uh, kind of help protect the skies maybe a little bit be better uh, just because it has a 5 HE missile. Uh, you can just fire off quicker than you would with an Igla. Uh, the ZU-23 not really going to be hitting any aircraft because it has such a low range. Uh, so that's kind of where you want to rely on the Strela. Uh, in terms of helicopters, you get plenty of these AA MI-24s, even an AA Akula, uh, which is really nice. I kind of like doing uh, something like that. Uh, and then I'll bring both of these Akulas and then maybe just kind of like one uh, really cheap attack helicopter, just so I can start with the cheap attack helicopter. If he throws a plane at this, I know, all right, I need to kind of use some more of these uh, cheaper AA helicopters before I can really bring out the Akula. Uh, but the thing is, you have a lot of these MiG-29s as another card of the cheaper ones got added. You still have uh, the base one as well. So you can really protect your skies now and protect uh, your helicopter tab as well as like your uh, helicopter born infantry as well. Um, these MiG-29s, you want to bring all six of these. Uh, that way, you're not going to struggle against any opponent that's trying to air spam you. Uh, unless you're really misusing those MiG-29s, uh, you should be in a pretty good spot all game. Uh, you also have some really good attack aircraft with the SUAT and the SU cluster. Uh, you have a really good seed uh, if you want to you know, clear the skies for those attack aircraft as well. And you get the really good MiG-27K uh, LGB bomber, uh, which can destroy uh, pretty much all those uh, heavy tanks. Uh, that you're going against or any high priority uh, target that you want to hit. And uh, with all that said, we'll go back to our tier list. And I'm going to put 35Y at S tier. Uh, I think this is the strongest division in the game by a long shot. It feels like you're just playing the game on easy mode whenever you pick this division and whenever you play it. Uh, it has a good opener. It has a good mid game. It even has a good late game. Uh, the late game isn't the strongest, but like you, you, you just you can have very good control throughout the entire game with this division. You pretty much have everything you need 
to counter whatever you're up against. Um, you have the heavy tanks, you have the good aircraft, uh, you have the very good infantry, uh, you have good recon, uh, you have a good amount of supply, you don't have the best artillery, uh, but you have really good close range artillery. So it's not really much you're lacking here. You also have very good helicopters, uh, whereas if you control the sky kind of in the late game, it's going to be very hard for your opponent to get rid of that and do any type of pushing as long as those are in the sky. Um, so yeah, I definitely think this is the best division in the game, and uh, I definitely would keep it uh, at S tier. So next on the list, we got 39th. So we will hop into that now. So 39th guards, uh, pretty standard supply uh, or logistics tab. Uh, I like just kind of taking two of these Urals and then like a quick uh, BTR and then maybe like a 20 point snab uh, just so I can keep that snab with my AA. Uh, th they did change this recently to where you have to get your BMP uh, threes through your two cards of Motostroke RPG 22s, uh, but this is still plenty of BMP threes. 18 of these, you're not really going to be feeling uh, like you're lacking any BMP3s. And that's part of the fun of this division, is these BMP3s. Uh, they're very, very fun to use. You get a nice long-range ground cannon. Uh, you get a good auto cannon. You get a really good ground-to-ground -ground missile uh, with the 2,800-meter range. Very, very strong unit. You also can get a card of Metis. Um, Motostroke, not too bad. Uh, if you feel like you need any BMP2s, you know, you can maybe just bring in a card of that. BMP2 itself, not too bad uh, with the Conquerors and the Auto Cannon. Get also a Conquerors Infantry Unit. Uh, you get the Superior RPO, so you can deal with uh, other infantry uh, quite handily. Uh, they even added an SPG-9 in here, but I don't really, I'm not too much of a fan of the SPG-9 because of the two strength. I find they just die too easily. I never really find them too useful, especially for their price point of 55 points. Uh, I'd find I'd rather just have uh, some type of infantry instead. And you do get two cards of these Motostroke. Uh, that you can just kind of put in some BTR uh, as well. But the infantry tab, uh, pretty well balanced. You you got everything you pretty much need to deal with whatever situation you're up against. And you're not really going to run out of infantry because you get a ton of cheap slots here uh, that you can really fill out. In terms of artillery, uh, you're not really lacking here either. You get these D20s, uh, which are very nice. Uh, you get your mortars. Uh, I wouldn't really take the light howitzer here uh, when you have something like a D20. I um, would rather take that. Uh, you can even go a Katsia route if you don't want to worry about counter artillery. Uh, Katsia, not too bad. Uh, even the Gvatstika, not really bad at dealing uh, with uh, opponents, infantry, and uh, buildings and whatnot. And then you get the Urgen, uh, which is kind of, it's always been one of my favorite uh, artillery units. I still really like this. Um, but haven't really used it too much recently, but it's still very, very strong. Uh, very, very good. I've just been kind of using more of the standard artillery recently, uh, but at least with the Ergen, you know, you're more mobile. Uh, still does a lot of damage. Uh, it does take a little bit to reload, um, but because of your supply situation in this building and because you have such cheap kind of slots here, you're not really going to be hurting uh, for supply to fire this guy off uh, if you know kind of where he's clumping a lot of units that you want to hit kind of all at once. In terms of the tank tab, uh, this is also a pretty big strength of this division. You have this Rapira, uh, which is kind of a, a must-take in my opinion. Very, very good defensive gun uh, for 100 points. As long as your opponent doesn't have artillery out, uh, this is pretty good for starting out. If you don't want to be too aggressive, which I don't really think you need to be with 39th, it's more of kind of a build-up and then attack division uh, once you get all those assets in place. Uh, so this is pretty good for an opener. Uh, just kind of pluck one of these around in a good spot. Uh, until your opponent gets artillery up, then they become useless. So you don't want to overinvest into them. Uh, not really a fan of any of the T62s. So I don't really bring uh, any of these, even though this uh, T62 MV and the M here come with the uh, Bastion missile. Not really too much of a fan of the T62 lineup because of the rate of fire. Um, the gun is just really, really, really poor. Uh, I am a fan of the T80B, though. I do find this unit very, very uh, effective. However, if your opponent. Let's say you start with a T-80B and your opponent starts with a BB. Uh, your T-80B isn't really going to fare too well. You don't really want to buy any more of these uh, if your opponent has a heavier tank than this. But let's say you know, you're playing against a division like 7th Panzer, uh, for example. These T-80Bs 
going to be able to put in a lot of work against a division that just kind of has those medium to light tanks. Um, so I think I think it's very good to just take kind of two cards of that. And then you just kind of want to stack up on these T80BVs. Uh, you got plenty of slots for it. You can get a lot of these T80BVs. Uh, if we just, I'd recommend taking kind of all tanks at uh, mid-vet. But, you know, you could do something like that, and you're already up to, you know, 16 tanks. Even adding the command version there, uh, if, you, if you really <laughs> just want to go for it. Um, it gets you a total of kind of 18 uh, pretty much heavy tanks. Uh, very, very nice to have, especially in combination with BMP-3s. In terms of recon, you get a really strong MI-24 recon helicopter, uh, just like 35Y. Uh, really, really nice to have. Uh, and then you kind of want to rely on some ground recon here, uh, the 7 strength Mods Rodveca, really nice to have to help you push. Uh, you could even go as far as the 8-man uh, Rosveca Saperi. Uh, just because it's recon, you're not really wanting to take engagements anyways. Um, so these guys can at least deal better uh, versus opposing infantry, and they got a little bit more survivability. Uh, but I basically just kind of use uh, this really cheap squad and the seven man uh, team here for the RPG 22, just in case we come up against uh, some armor on the other side without being able to support. AA tab, you got the Igla, uh, which is always nice to have. Uh, I'm a fan of the Strela uh, 10M. Uh, they're hit or miss. Uh, I, I generally like stacking two or three of these. I like stacking them at least two. I never bring one solo. I'm always putting them in groups of two, and they seem to fare pretty well. Um, they only have 50% accuracy. Uh, they fire off uh, four salvos, well, four missiles and one salvo, uh, so that's pretty nice. Um, so you can just fire off four missiles before you have to basically deal with this 20-second reload time. So if you bring two of these, you know, you're firing off eight missiles uh, with 50% chance to hit against whatever you're going up against. Uh, you're likely to at least at least hit one of those missiles. <laughs> um but yeah, these guys can also fire on the move with the same 50% accuracy. So you can kind of keep these mobile, just moving around, fire off your missiles, protect your, your tanks that way, and use these guys offensively because they are armored as well. And they have a really good uh, anti-helicopter range. Uh, so I really like them for that. And then you just kind of support the coops uh, against those planes uh, at the long range and whatnot. Helicopter tab. I like kind of using these AA helicopters at the start. Uh, you can really... Uh, protect any type of place you want to go aggressive in. And if you bring out two or three of these at the start, uh, you're likely to shoot down whatever plane uh, is flying at you. So it kind of is good at uh, destroying that early ASF uh, that your opponent is likely to start with uh, in the current meta that we're in. Uh, you could also go with the cheap uh, MI-24 rocket version as well. A really good attack helicopter for the points. Um, I think that's a good way to go. You also have access to the MI-24 VP. Uh, if you want the 20% ECM or the 16 Cocons, if you think you're going to need it, as well as a better uh, main cannon there. Uh, but for 100 more points, I think I'd rather just save that 100 points and go with a cheap attack helicopter that's likely to get an ASF suicided into it anyways. In terms of the air tab, uh, you get these really good MiG-23 MLDs. Big fan of these. Very, very good ASF. Uh, you can pick any type of SU-25 uh, that you want. Uh, I would only really recommend the Rocket or the AT version, though. Cluster and Napalm, not really that great. Uh, but the MiG-27 LGB, talked about this with 35th, very, very solid. Uh, you get a solid bomber as well, and you get an SU-27S. Uh, not the biggest fan of this. Uh, it does have a lot of missiles, though. Uh, pretty good accuracy, uh, at least better ECM uh, than the MiG-23. Uh, um, but I think just for the cost and all that, like you're saving 100 points for the MiG-23, uh, it's just, unless you're loitering around the SU-27 to, like, spot the Nighthawk or something because of the exceptional optics, I feel like you're just rather going to want to have the MiG-23 flying out there uh, because you're not really too sad if you if you lose a MiG-23, but you're going to be very, very sad when you lose a one-on-one -on -one with a SU-27S, and it does happen. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, still a great kind of all-round uh, division. It's kind of the best all-round division in the game. Uh, so when we go back to the tier list here, um, I think it pretty much has everything you need to be successful. And I'm putting it in S tier because you have good all-around infantry. You have a good all-around tank tab. Uh, you have a good all-around plane tab. You have a good all-around artillery tab. You're not really lacking 
anything. You can adapt to whatever division you're playing against and kind of play it extremely well. So I still think uh, 39th is an S tier division. I don't think it's as strong as uh, the VDV here, uh, but I do think it does deserve its place uh, in S tier. So with that being said, uh, now let's go into third armored. So third armored, standard kind of logistics tab. Uh, you do get a pretty nice uh, little command Bradley here, although I don't really find situations where I'm wanting to take that. I generally just tank, take uh, two MI-35 or M35 uh, and then a card of the UH uh, Huey here. And then we just go with a mud because you get three of these uh, pretty quick and you're going to want the fast CV uh, in this division. Uh, MP patrols, always nice to have, uh, especially with the RCL. Uh, very, very good at just stunning up opposing infantry. Uh, very, very good for just kind of spreading around. Do run out of those RCLs very, very quickly. Um, so you're going to want to keep that recoilless rifle supplied. Uh, but it's very, very good just to kind of hold the ground at the start. Uh, these other MP patrols, also not too bad. Uh, you get a lot of value uh, for this five-man team for only 15 points. A very, very good value unit. If you can fit it in, highly recommend taking it. Um, other things, though, fire team AT4, very, very good with the two M249s. And then I kind of like taking a card of the Dragon with this upgraded Bradley, uh, just because you get the five... Uh, front armor there, so it can survive a hit if you're playing against uh, somebody with a Metis team. Uh, you at least won't lose this Bradley uh, to that Metis. So you can use these Bradleys more aggressively for pushing and whatnot. And the Dragon team, uh, not too bad because it is the upgraded Dragon 2. Uh, so you will do 18 pin uh, from this unit. Flash, very, very good uh, unit. Very good to attack in forest and uh, cities with. as They will earn their value uh, pretty fast as they can fire these four flashes off very, very quickly and uh, stun other units down. Uh, air rifles are pretty good. Um, there's certain situations where they're not going to be good, uh, but I think they're maybe worth having uh, if you can fit them in. Uh, mech rifles also pretty good for just uh, an 11-man assault team. Uh, they do a lot of DPS, so even defensively, these guys are going to absolutely just shred uh, opposing infantry. And then card of Ito, uh, just because the suppression is really, really great on these Itos. It's a three man team as well, so your survivability is a lot higher. I uh, can really do a lot of damage with that. Artillery tab, pretty base basic. You get MRS, uh, M10, uh, and then just kind of your standard mortars here. Tank tab, uh, you get your M1A1s. You also get the M1HA which is kind of a big strength of this division, that 22 pin uh, compared to the 20 on the regular M1A1 uh, is a big deal, especially with the three additional front armor there. Uh, so HAs are really just going to, as long as you can keep them supported, uh, they're really going to do a lot of damage every single hit. And anything that hits them is basically just going to be a small little scratch on uh, that nice little camouflage there. Um, but basically, you just want to bring in some M1A1s, uh, maybe a command tank or two, and then just kind of like two or three cards of this HA here because likely your opponent's going to target these with an LGB bomber. Um, so you're going to want to make sure to have AA uh, near this, but as long as it's supported properly, it's not going to be a problem. And if we just quickly go to the AA of a third here, you're not really struggling with AA. Uh, you have very, very good stingers with the five. Uh, HE, so two hits with these. Uh, you're going to destroy any plane that's not armored. The PVADs, uh, very, very good at shredding helicopters, especially at close range. And then your Chaparral uh, with that range right now, absolutely just bonkers, uh, can really, really help support that HA and deal with any opposing aircraft uh, that try to drop their bombs on it. Uh, if we go back to the recon tab, sniper's pretty great for starting. Okay, do have that advanced deployment. Uh, you kind of want that in this division because you don't have anything else that's forward deployable. Um, so snipers can kind of help uh, to give you the early eyes on what your opponent's doing. M150 is not too bad either. Very, very cheap uh, with a 16 uh, penetration toe. Pretty solid unit all around. I don't really bring any of these Kiowas uh, just because they're the four hit points. 
they're quite expensive for recon helicopters, so I never really find myself bringing that. And then maybe you can fit in a card of the uh, recon Bradley, but you don't really need it because, again, you're going to go for this five front armored, uh, you know, upgraded M2A2 over the uh, M3A1 with only the three front armor there. This will die to one hit from a Metis. So you want to you want to kind of have that more front armored Bradley so you can keep it alive for longer and retain that value. We've already talked about the AA, but in terms of the helicopter tab, uh, Cobra is always really good for the start. Super cheap at 120 points. Can really mess up somebody's opener if they're not uh, bringing ASF or early AA to deal with this. Uh, this can do a lot of damage. And you get two per card, which is super nice. You can also bring in the Apache, uh, but I find, uh, you know, just bring in two Cobras instead of an Apache, uh, and you'll have a lot better time because uh, that Apache is likely just going to get gun run uh, if you're not supporting it uh, with an ASF. Uh, these other Apaches, very, very nice, though, with the Hellfires. I do like at least having two, uh, even three of these uh, in my helicopter tab. Uh, because these Hellfires, you're going to want to just keep them at range, but they're going to be just a constant nuisance for your opponent. Your opponent's going to want to just suicide his aircraft uh, into these Apaches to deal with them. But if you have Chaparrales up, uh, if you have ASFs of your own up, uh, you're going to be able to deal very nicely with that. That leads us to uh, the air tab, where we basically have the best ASF in the game, the F-15C Eagle. Uh, very, very good speed, very good ECM. Good air optics. Uh, these AMRAMs are fire and forget. Uh, so these guys could just fire off uh, these AMRAMs every time it reloads, likely to kill whatever aircraft uh, you're going up against there. You don't have the most missiles at only six uh, compared to like a uh, tornado that has eight. Um, but you do have very, very solid 60% hit chance on these. Uh, you do pay quite the premium for it though, but the F-15 uh, C, very, very good. Uh, for dealing with opposing air. Uh, the Phantom, also finding a lot of use cases for this too, uh, just to kind of start out so you don't have to, you know, put that 275 uh, point chunk of points into the, the air tab at the start. You can spend 185, at least have uh, something up. And in combination with other units, like if you have a Phantom up and an A-10 up at the same time, it's actually still pretty scary for an opposing ASF to go up against uh, because you get the two. M9's here with the A-10, and you're armored. Uh, your gun's going to be useful against the other plane. And here, you get tons of these Sparrows and even uh, more M9s, even though these are only the 40% uh, accuracy version versus the better ones on the Thunderbolt there with the 60%. Uh, but the Phantom, not too bad, just dealing uh, with other planes. Um, pretty good starting uh, ASF unit. This bomber here for 175 points, I think it's very, very cost-efficient. Very good bomber. Uh, even the cluster plane, I'd, I'd kind of recommend this for taking out uh, any easy uh, armored targets. Uh, even AA, very, very nice. If you see it shooting, just send a phantom cluster after it. You're likely to get through and I'll take out that AA. A10, very, very strong. Highly recommend. Would we'll definitely uh, take this unit. So with that being said, uh, third armored on our tier list here, I think goes in the S tier. I'd actually put it above uh, 39th. I think it's a little bit uh, better of a division there. Um, I don't think it's quite as good as 35th, though, because you don't have all the forward deployability stuff. You actually have to kind of build up a little bit before you can really get going, unlike 35th, where you can just keep it going all game long. Uh, but I do think it has maybe just a little bit better of a uh, composition of units than... Uh, 39th uh, can kind of muster, and on certain maps it can kind of excel uh, beyond that. But still, every division in S tier, extremely, extremely strong. I just think it's slightly uh, better than 39th, just given uh, the Apaches, given uh, the Eagles, uh, the tanks, the heavy tanks with the HA. Uh, the infantry, not quite as good as what you'd see in 39th. Uh, you do kind of struggle a little bit there. Uh, but all those Bradleys uh, with the 25 tow two, uh, 25 pen tow two, that is, uh, going to be doing a lot of damage against opposing armor. And if you get those guys in cover, uh, it's going to be very, very hard to deal with. 
as you also have a good artillery tab uh, to where you can keep your opponent at bay uh, that way as well. And you have plenty of supply uh, to keep that uh, going. Um, but yeah. So with that being said, uh, let's get into fourth Machutsen. So fourth Mott, uh, one of your East German uh, divisions, pretty good. Uh, logistics tab, infantry tab, going to be uh, using a lot of these Machutsen and BTRs. Very, very solid infantry. Uh, very, very good. One of my favorite. Uh, infantry units in the game actually i feel like these guys never really fail they're always good against opposing infantry you have a good 18 pin uh, rpg the double lmg also really helps and the fact they come at veteran uh, with a good amount of availability is very very nice to have uh, so i like taking all three cards of those in the spg or in the uh, spw 70 and you kind of bring a card of conquerors uh, flamethrower unit very very nice to have you don't have any type of rpo here uh, but you at least have the flamethrower unit and your infantry is kind of good enough to go against other infantry uh, as well because it's already up bedded and it also comes with the resolute trait to uh, kind of lower that suppression in combat another good thing about fourth get these FS Jaeger specifically the FS Jaeger Metis really really good forward deployable Metis unit uh, very very solid definitely recommend taking that the FS Jaeger not too bad itself basically an upgraded uh, Mod shoots and squad just because they get the special forces trait there. Uh, just five points more. Uh, if we just compare them real quick, let's see. Not a lot of difference there. The regular Mod just gets another LMG, uh, whereas they replace uh, the assault rifle um, with the FS Jaeger. But basically, it's just it's basically it feels like the same unit. The FS Jaeger just really nice to have for those close range engagements because of that shock trait. And the Special Forces trait going to do a lot of favors um, with that veterancy increased. In terms of artillery, uh, you do have a smirch, which is okay. I uh, don't really have any issues with the smirch. I think it's all right. I have fun using it every now and then. Uh, other than that, though, you have Akatsias, Gavastikas, uh, just standard tube, arty, and mortars. Nothing too special here except for the smirch. In terms of the tank tab, this is where this division really kind of lacks. Uh, you're relying a lot on these T-55As. Uh, you're also relying a lot on AT guns. And you, then you're relying on these T-55 AM-2Bs, which are actually very good. Uh, these guys, I really like bringing these guys out early, but once they go down, uh, it's really hard to fight against opposing tanks because then you don't really have the range uh, to fire at them. You don't want these guys in close. You want these guys over just an open field since they have that range where they can fire off these ground-to-ground uh, -ground missiles. And then you kind of have to switch it up where you rely on these T-55 uh, AM-2s, but they don't have the best penetration. Uh, they at least have the max range. They at least have good accuracy. Uh, these are going to really struggle against T-80s and whatnot. In terms of the recon tab, uh, you have your standard MI-2, which I really like because of the six hit points. They don't at least die to a Stinger or an Igla. You have pretty good uh, recon infantry here with these infiltration units. Um, I specifically like this one a little bit better just because it does have a law. Um, never really find myself using this one too much uh, because we have the FS Jaeger uh, that we can use um, and the FS Jaeger Metis, so I'm not really using these guys too much. But I do like the Einzengruppe uh, because of the law. It's just nice to be able to deal uh, with opposing vehicles that way and then maybe like a card of these motorized off clear uh, this little cheap transport here uh, as my other unit because you don't really get a big amount of availability here i feel like i'd just rather have the two extra availability uh, for the recon because you're going to need it uh, pt 76 is not too bad uh, it's you know a 40 point recon unit you can just kind of have it all over the map to protect uh, your your entire like front line make sure nothing sneaks through uh, maybe sneak one of these through uh, to get some rear line action going. doesn't have a kinetic round, has a heat round. Uh, so remember that when you're trying to flank that heavy tank, you don't want this guy to get in close because that penetration is not going to scale. In terms of AA, uh, you at least have Coops. Uh, you have Strela 10Ms. Uh, you have the Shilka, which I'm still not the biggest fan of. Um, 
but it is better than it was. Uh, and then you have the Iglas. Uh, the other thing you have is you have these four deployable Strela 2Ms, uh, which I feel like are kind of a must take uh, if you want to send out those uh, FS Jaeger Metis uh, because you're going to need that AA support at the start. And this is your only uh, advanced uh, the four deployable AA. In terms of helicopters, you get a lot of helicopter choices here. Uh, the, the one I'd recommend the most is the MI-24 DAT-2, uh, just because you get 80 of these uh, rockets here, uh, and something compared to like 40 uh, on the AA version. The AA version, also just not going to do the best in terms of uh, the AA missiles. You only get two of them. They're not the best accuracy. Uh, they only do 3 HE, so you don't really want to rely upon that one. Uh, but I do something like two cards of that. Um, you can kind of go back and forth if you'd rather have the AA or the MI-24D. Uh, it is nice because you at least get two of these, and they do come with the better rockets. Uh, but if if you feel like the Falanga P is going to have a good day and actually be able to hit something, I'd kind of recommend that. And then just take two of these uh, more advanced ones down here, which both have uh, the 10% ECM in both of them. Uh, well, this one at least has 80 uh, of those, and then this one basically gets four more of the Kokons and then sacrifices uh, 40 rockets for it. But they both have the better uh, GSH 30K 30mm uh, gun as well, uh, so that's pretty nice to have in combination with that 10% ECM. And, well, if you look at it, you get eight basically uh, big attack armored helos here, uh, so that's pretty nice to have. Uh, in terms of the air tab, you actually get some fun choices here. This MiG-21 BIS, very good uh, little bomber. Uh, the MiG-21 BIS AA, uh, it's okay at dealing with helicopters. It's not going to one one pass anything unless both of these missiles hit, uh, which is pretty rare. Um, but it, it has it has the potential there. So if you're feeling lucky, uh, why not? But two of these are uh, going to be pretty good at dealing uh, with helicopters. Uh, then your bomber to basically hit any uh, infantry out in the open or any uh, squad like a Spetsnaz or something, it'll pretty much delete that. Uh, very good for starting out uh, with these bombers. They're pretty hard to deal with at the start of a game. And then the MiG-29, good ASF card to have. Very solid uh, fighter aircraft. Uh, in terms of going after those heavy tanks, you at least get three of these SU-22 AT planes. Very good at dealing with tanks. Uh, Cluster also very good at dealing with tanks. Uh, and then you get a nice bomber here, but I feel like if you're going with the MiG-21, uh, why do you really need the extra two bombers here? Uh, it might might be a little too heavy on uh, the bombing tab there, so maybe don't want to go for that. But in terms of where we rank this on the tier list, uh, I think 4th Mod shoots him. It's a good B tier uh, division. I think it does some things well, uh, but I think it really just kind of drops off uh, depending on the division that you're playing against. Um, it doesn't really have the best tank tab, has a very good infantry tab, has a good helicopter tab, has a decent AA tab, and it has a good air tab. Uh, so you can uh, really use it uh, in that kind of a way. Uh, but in terms of like pushing across an open field, uh, you're, you're not really going to fare too well. So you want to keep all those engagement distances uh, pretty small and basically rely on your infantry and your air uh, and your helicopters to, to help you win the game. But if you lose the air war, uh, your helicopters are, aren't really going to be useful. Uh, if you get all your helicopters shot down, uh, your air is not really going to have anything to protect and help your infantry push through areas. Um, it can just, if you lose kind of one of those asset classes, uh, it's, it's not just going to be, it's not going to be a good game. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into fifth uh, Panzer. So 5th Panzer, good logistics tab all around. In terms of the infantry, uh, like I said before, West German infantry just doesn't feel that great to me, but you can just spam out uh, a lot of Jaegers, a lot of Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, you can pump out these Martyrs here uh, with the four hit points so you don't die to the Metis. Uh, you have a card of Milan 2s you can bring. Uh, not really too much of a fan of the Pioneer Armburst. I don't really feel like uh, they're that great, especially with the 13 uh, little anti-tank rocket launcher here. doesn't really uh, do all that much. Uh, and the Pioneer Flam, you know, it is what it is. Not the best, but at least does something. Um, but yeah, not really a fan of the infantry tap here. 
more of a spam infantry uh, type feeling. Uh, artillery tab, though, pretty great. Just like 2nd Panzer, has a lot of the same type of stuff we've already talked about uh, with the 155s, uh, the Mars, uh, the really heavy artillery. Don't take the Lars, uh, but the Panzer Mars are uh, going to also be uh, very good. In terms of the tank tab, uh, what kind of separates it from 2nd Panzer is you get these 2A4s and you get a lot more. Uh, you get two additional cards, actually, of these uh, 2A3s. Um, so that's pretty great. Uh, you can use this more as a heavy tank division. Um, you still get at least a card of the uh, Leopard 1A5s, unlike the two that come in 2nd Panzer. Uh, so you still have that light tank uh, kind of spam uh, ability, especially with the 1A1A1s here. Uh, so you can still kind of use those at the start, uh, get some maybe good mobility shots or good side shots on stuff, uh, really push the ground early because your opponent can't really get that heavy tank in and you already got the 1A5 to deal with all the IFEs. Uh, so it is good uh, for that. Uh, in terms of recon, get your little heavy HP Eager off clear. The best unit though, uh, which kind of separates this one from second Panzer, is this good uh, Fern Spare unit. I feel like at least with the Fern Spare, you have some chance at um, basically fighting other infantry units. You get six availability on these guys too. Uh, so that's pretty solid. Uh, they are Special Forces, Shock, and Airborne, and they are a GSR unit. Uh, but the availability, because usually you would only get four of these at max, uh, at least with the lower veteran, so you can get two additional one of these. And, uh, well, this is basically your, your anti-infantry unit <laughs> in this division uh, because they do do that job uh, fairly well, and you still get the Lukes uh, to go behind the lines. In terms of the AA, uh, not a big fan of the West German AA. Uh, Flieger Faust, you just kind of want to spam them out. Uh, Geppards, uh, we've already talked about them. Uh, rolling threes, not a fan of any type of rolling unit. Uh, just because this reload time, you only get two shots off and then you got to reload for 20 seconds. In terms of the rolling two, you get two shots off and you got to reload for 16 seconds. Uh, you never really seem to connect with both missiles, uh, which is fair because, you know, the accuracy doesn't really show that you would anyways. Um... But yeah, you, you got to have a lot of these rollins up if you really want to take out uh, any kind of aircraft. They do have good uh, range on uh, their missiles here, but it just seems like if you have one of these out, uh, you're not really going to be able to deal with a helicopter. You got to have <laughs> like two or three rolling twos if you want to deal with an Apache, and uh, it can still be super sketchy where you actually lose that battle. Uh, just because of this reload time, if you miss, it's it's really going to struggle. And for 110 points, it's not very uh, cost efficient to just keep bringing these out. Um, so I find they kind of struggle. I'm not really a fan of those rollins. Uh, speaking of the Apache, though, you get two of those uh, in Fifth Panzer, which is really nice to have. I can really use these rockets uh, efficiently as long as you're kind of protecting this. Uh, but that becomes the issue because you don't really have any good ASF. Uh, and your air tab, you got to rely on these F4Fs, uh, which are pretty nice at helicopter hunting. Uh, your F10 4Gs, also a very fast aircraft, so uh, can help protect the skies. They are cheap as well, so as long as your opponent overextends with his aircraft, you can kind of catch him out with these two planes. Uh, but that's about all you're really going to be able to do there, uh, helicopter hunt, and then hope your opponent uh, overextends. Uh, in terms of other things, you do get the IDS, uh, which I'd recommend. Uh, you do get a uh, somewhat okay bomber, uh, which I'd also recommend if you have the spot for it. Uh, I'd either go with the Tornado IDS HE, uh, which can kind of double as a helicopter hunter, but if you're using both the F4S and the uh, F10 4G, you're not really going to need it. Maybe you get uh, this F4 HE1 here just because you get the additional uh, one plane slot there. And uh, even though the bombs aren't the greatest, uh, you're still likely to kill. Uh, whatever you're dropping these on, just because it does drop so many of them. You could always go with Seed as well, but I feel like you don't really have the attack aircraft to really want Seed, uh, so I never find myself wanting Seed uh, in this division. But back to the tier list, uh, if we were to rank 5th Panzer, I think it is a solid uh, B tier uh, division. And I actually... I uh, think it is actually better than 2nd Panzer, if I can get it there. There we go. <laughs> but um, I think it's better than 2nd just because you get more heavy tanks. Um, 
get just the infantry just because of the fern spare it just feels a little bit better uh you're, you're basically working with the same stuff otherwise i'm sure you get the asf in second uh they're very close in terms of the map and all that uh it can kind of swing either way is second pants are better is fifth pants are better i just feel like you're going to want the heavy tanks more uh and then you're going to really want feel the need for the fern spare and uh i don't know i just feel like fifth has a little bit better of a composition uh, than second panzer especially for the late game if you survive into the late game uh fifth panzer is going to feel a lot better than if you were in a late game situation with second panzer and second panzer doesn't really excel enough in the early game uh for me to really justify because it falls off kind of mid to late game whereas fifth panzer only gets stronger as the game uh, goes on so i feel like that makes it uh just a slight bit better but in terms of the next division we got 5e or fifth blend a so 5e standard logistic tab as always uh, you do at least get an armored bab pc if you don't want to take uh, the three cards of p4 in terms of the infantry Infantry feels fine. Uh, it's not the best. It's better than West German infantry, uh, but it's you know it's not gonna it's not gonna make you say oh wow this this infantry feels pretty good. Uh, but you do at least get some flamethrowers. Uh, your Grenadier Vultures aren't that bad because they are ten man, uh, but they don't have a double, uh, basically a medium machine gun uh, like something like the Mod Schutzen. Uh, but they are 10, 10 strength, uh, so they are gonna do. A lot of damage if you just go to the regular one said the appeals version you're going to get something with 15 penetration a little l rack here um, so not really going to do a lot versus tanks uh, it's going to take two shots to basically kill uh your your, your light vehicles and whatnot um your ifvs with three armor it's going to take two shots uh so you will kind of struggle if uh you don't have enough voltagers up and uh there's a lot of ifvs on the other side um so it is going to get pretty hard uh, commandos though very very good squad highly recommend uh, taking these and using these for your offensive actions uh, they do suffer from the same uh, little 15 penetration l rack here um, but as long as you're kind of keeping these guys in the middle of the city or just on the uh, kind of outer edge um, you're going to be able to as long as you're not getting fire supported to be able to deal with kind of one vehicle at a time uh, no problem because uh, the six percent accuracy uh, is really nice uh, you can always get the anti-char, uh, but I prefer just using the Vulture Apila squad here because uh, they're going to have kind of that same effect as we were talking about with the Leveny and the Legionnaire Paras. Not as good as an infantry squad, but they at least have uh, the Apilas to deal with stuff. Uh, you also have a card of Milan 2. Um, if you really want to use IFEs, uh, you can go with the AMX 10P. Only problem being you don't have any type of Milan uh, that this vehicle is going to be firing, so it's not the best IV. Uh, and you're still paying out 40 points for it. It feels a little too expensive uh, for what you're getting here. Uh, basically, not really going to find any value with that AMX 10P uh, unless you're just going through heavy forest and uh, fighting that way. In terms of artillery, uh, you got the VAB uh, PM81 to work with. Uh, so that's always nice. Uh, you got the AMX off one. Uh, very good salvo length here. So you can... Uh, you know, do a lot of damage with this over time. Pretty good howitzer. Uh, but the VAB going to help you out uh, with the smoking, uh, gaining ground that direction. AMX 30 uh, B, pretty good starting thing for 90 points. I think this is very good at just dealing with other infantry, especially in the open. This can really uh, wreak havoc on other units. I uh, used to be a fan of the EBG, uh, but not really a fan too much anymore. Uh, they just get stunned up and just never really seems like you can output enough damage even though it is only 50 points i don't really find uh, these working out too well anymore p4 milan's always great already talked about those uh, the vab mephisto and the amx 10 hot you get that extra ground range over the p4 um, you also get a little bit more suppression from the hot two i do think these are actually pretty good uh, they are 100 points though so you got to think about it would i rather have two p4s or would i ha rather have a vab mephisto kind of like bring in like one card of each of those. Um, and then I like bringing in uh, especially a card of the Brennus here. Uh, the Brennus, very, very good for 145 points. So that's kind of a must take. Uh, the B2, not too 
uh, bad as well. If you just compare it with the Brennus there, the Brennus obviously has uh, more pen on its main gun, a little bit more armor, and the ERA uh, trait, which adds that two extra uh, HP there. Um, but overall, the AMX 30B2 is still going to be very, very good uh, with its auto cannon and just its 17 pen, uh, even though it doesn't have ERA and has the one less armor. Uh, but I kind of like doing uh, something like that uh, for my tank tab uh, for 5e. In terms of recon, uh, you have the VA, VAB Milan again, uh, which is nice because since you're only bringing in uh, one card of these P4s, uh, if you can manage to sneak in another card of these VAB Milans, we've already talked about uh, how good this unit uh, is compared to that P4. And Dragon Paras, uh, really nice GSR recon unit. A uh, little expensive, um, especially when you compare it to something like the SAS uh, Patrol, which I believe are only 60 points or 65 points, something like that. Uh, the SAS Patrol, obviously, miles better than the Dragon Paris, but still, you want to take this unit. still very good. And then, obviously, the best part of this division going to be these AMX-10 uh, RCs, especially the Sir Blende here with that additional uh, one uh, armor to make it the four front armor versus the three front armor of the AMX-10, uh, uh, just standard version here. Uh, very, very good starting units. Definitely want to start uh, with some of these, uh, maybe get them behind the lines. Uh, you can basically just cut off a whole supply line with one of these AMX-10s. Uh, very, very hard to deal with because they also have that mediocre stealth and they have very good optics. In terms of AA, you have four of these Mistrals. Uh, unlike 11E with only four, I mean, un you have six of these Mistrals, unlike 11E with only four of them. Uh, so you're already uh, getting better AA. You can also go for these AMX 13 DCAs. Uh, these are radar, uh, but they are pretty good uh, dealing with helicopters. Uh, the TRM 2000, uh, not, you know, the greatest, uh, but it is 35 points. If you just kind of put these behind your lines, maybe you're expecting some helicopter action uh, behind your lines and whatnot. Uh, you know, two of these just kind of hidden. Um, when a helicopter gets close, these will absolutely shred uh, whatever helicopter shows up. So that is pretty nice. Uh, and then you've got the Roland 2 and the Roland 3. We already know how I feel about those. Um, so I wouldn't really recommend those. Uh, then you get Gazelle Hots. Uh, we've already talked about these. And the AA tab. Uh, you got to rely on these Mirage F1Cs. I've already talked about how I'm not the biggest fan of these anymore. Um, but, you know, you still probably want to take uh, both cards. Uh, you got the AT plane to work with for that heavier armor. Uh, I find this cluster plane it's, it has a high drop, so it's pretty hard that you're going to hit a competent opponent that's microing his tanks. I would, however, recommend the Napalm version uh, because this is actually like a dive drop, and uh, it really messes up that infantry because the French Napalm is still kind of broken and uh, extremely strong at the moment, so I would recommend that. Uh, HE plane, obviously very good. At dealing with infantry as well, and you can get four of those. Uh, Mirage threes uh, used to be pretty good to take, uh, but they only have eight uh, hit points now. They still can be pretty useful, uh, especially if you get two of these uh, to deal with an opposing helicopter. Um, so maybe think about that as you know, you don't really want to send two of these after a helicopter, especially in skies where you don't know if the opponent has anything. So maybe it's good just to bring one card of these uh, since you're a, a situation isn't going to be the best at dealing uh, with hel attack helicopters. But with that being said, uh, to put 5e on the tier list, I would put it as a solid A tier division uh, between 1st Armored and 2nd uh, Infantry. As those AMXs, if you get them in numbers, uh, you can just kind of send them in waves, have a really strong... Uh, basically unstoppable force of AMX 30s. Uh, whenever you spot infantry, they'll just get instantly deleted. Uh, they really, 5e really excels in kind of medium uh, range uh, over long range. It's not going to do too well, but you at least have the P4s and the AMX 10s to where it's going to make your opponent have to basically have everything uh, up and ready to be able to deal with that, to cross that, uh, that open field, uh, we'll say. So I think this division uh, is still pretty good. I don't, it's not S tier anymore. It used to be S tier, uh, but I still think it's a pretty good uh, A tier division. It's fun to play. And like I said, when you get those AMX 30B2 and Brennus uh, numbers up, uh, you can really start to snowball uh, your opponent. So, that being said, uh, we'll go into seventh now. So, 
So 7th Panzer uh, used to be one of my favorite divisions. Don't really play it a lot too more. Uh, so that should already tell you kind of where it's going to probably go on the tier list. Uh, but decent logistics tab. Uh, pretty good infantry tab. Big fan of the mod shoots in uh, BTR. Really good infantry squad. Uh, you kind of want to use uh, these mod shoots in as well. I like just taking them in the standard uh, BMP1. Uh, maybe perhaps I should switch that to just a standard transport truck because I'm not really finding value out of this uh, BMP-1 uh, really anymore. So maybe get that 20 points uh, back of reinvestment uh, after you get that squad up to the front lines. I don't really like the BMP-1P uh, or the SPT-2 uh, just because the 16 pin here, you're not going to take out anything with three front armor. 17 is going to be that magic number. Uh, so these going to have to get two hits with that. Or just a hit with this and a hit with the uh, 2A28. And uh, yeah, it's kind of asking a lot. <laughs> so uh, at least you get a card of Upvetted Conquerors at Veteran. Uh, that's always nice. Uh, you get these Pioneer Flams, which is nice uh, just because of the veterancy here. Uh, Panzer Jaeger, really good at dealing uh, with opposing vehicles. But I feel like your standard mod shoots in with the 18 penetration already do uh, a good enough job there. Uh, in terms of artillery, don't really have too much to work with here. It uh, just depends if you would rather have the Akatsia or the Kvatska, and then you kind of want to take your one card of mortars. Uh, in terms of tanks, uh, you can go kind of the T-55 route, uh, go with these cheap T-55s, uh, maybe the Flame T-55s, but I'm kind of dropped off uh, my my likeness of these Flame T-55s. Don't really seem to get the Flames off anymore just because the aim time uh, is so massive. And you, you wanted to use these guys in close range before, but because it takes so long, uh, to basically fire this and then that reload time. Um, you just seem to lose these guys to uh, to RPGs uh, before they really can earn any value. Also, opponent, ta opponent tanks uh, really shred that 7 front armor. Uh, just a medium tank going against this is not going to be a very, very good day. Uh, then you get your T-55 AM-2s. Uh, the really good one I'd recommend is the T-55 AM-2 uh, B because it has this long-range missile. Would not take the standard T-72 because it doesn't have smoke. Uh, so really going to struggle unless you're just kind of sending this in a forest and attacking, then reversing, attacking, reversing. Uh, as soon as you get caught out or stunned, though, this guy's going to go down because you won't be able to smoke off. T-72Ms, uh, they're okay. Definitely far away from their glory days uh, because of they got more armor, but they got less uh, ground target range. They also already don't have the best accuracy compared to uh, other tanks in their price range. So, got to get them close, but you also don't want to be close because then the opponent's tanks can hit you pretty hard. And you don't really feel that extra armor uh, doing all too much. You at least get a good T-72M1. You get that additional two front armor, but again, you don't get that max range. And you really feel that with these T-72s. You also really feel it uh, when you upvet them like this. Uh, you only get 10. 10 kind of medium... Medium tanks. I wouldn't even call them heavy tanks just because they don't really have the uh, the damage to be a heavy tank, in my opinion, uh, even though the armor uh, is good. Um, but yeah, against any type of like T-80, M1A1, uh, you're really going to struggle to find that kill uh, with your T-72s. And considering you only get three per card here, six total T-72s plus the four of kind of the heavier ones, uh, you're just going to get out-tanked. You're not really going to be able uh, to deal with that opposing armor uh, against divisions, especially like first uh, armored. I think that is the uh, perfect counter pick to something like seventh, uh, just because chieftains can absolutely run through uh, these T-72s here. Uh, in terms of recon though, you get the MI-2, you get a uh, good off -clear. You also get the special off -clear, which is a good unit. That's pretty decent. It's very expensive though at uh, 80 points, um, but you know, it gives you your exceptional optics. Um, but it is quite a bit expensive. I'd still recommend taking it, though. In terms of AA, get your Igla, your Strela, uh, 2Ms. Probably just take a card of Igla, take your 10M, take your Kube, uh, and leave it at that. In terms of helicopters, you get two cards of your cheap little armored helicopter. Not the best because it only has the Flanga P. It doesn't have the 80 uh, millimeter rockets either, so you are going to struggle uh, with damage output there. But you at least get two of these uh, more heavily armored 10% ECM MI-24P uh, units as well. So you can still have quite a uh, good force of helicopters uh, in this division. 
Uh, the air tab kind of looks very similar to fourth, doesn't it? Uh, that's basically because it's very, very similar. <laughs> basically the same stuff. Uh, you get the MI, or not the MI, the MiG-21 BIS, a uh, very good bomber. You're kind of anti-helicopter unit here. The only thing you're lacking is the MiG-29 uh, because you don't really want to use this MiG-23 ML. Uh, it's a lot worse than the Soviet version as it has 10% less ECM. Um, also, just it's more expensive. It's five points more expensive, and it just doesn't feel doesn't feel that great. Uh, it's not a, not a very good plane to use. You do get three of them, but I just never find I'm really doing anything with this plane. I feel like it's just getting shot down uh, more than it's actually doing uh, damage. Uh, you do get the AT plane as well, though, and you get the cluster plane, uh, so I'd recommend uh, trying to fit both of those in as well because you're going to need that cluster and that AT to deal with that heavier armor. But in terms of the uh, tier list and where we put 7th, I'd recommend uh, kind of putting 7th in this C tier spot. And I'd actually put it behind 11E. I feel like 7th has kind of really, really fallen out of its glory days. Uh, T70, if you go for T72 build on this deck, it just really doesn't feel great. It really struggles. And uh, even though the infantry is great, uh, I still feel like in a matchup versus 11e, 7th uh, would just get absolutely pummeled. I feel like 11e has a, a little bit more tools, and I feel like Sag I'd rather have Sagai's in 7th uh, than actual T-72s, <laughs> just to put it that way. Uh, T-72s basically just feel overpriced. Uh, they don't feel great, uh, and you don't get many of them anyways uh, per card. So it just feels like you're always on the struggle bus when you're trying to play armor uh, with 7th. Um, but you at least get good infantry. Uh, you at least get a good amount of helicopters. Uh, but I just I don't think it's in a very strong state at the moment. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into 79th. Let me redo that. Let's get into 79th now. <laughs> so 79th, uh, pretty good logistics tab. Um, not the best, though, in terms of activation slots. Actually, one of the worst ones in the game. I'll take that back. Uh, just because of the, you can only get four stuff here. You don't have any room uh, for expansion. So that kind of limits your ability to take this Burantino. Uh, not really ever going to see this in a ranked game. Pretty hard to bring out. You at least get the double card Urals and to be slab, and you get a fast command. Uh, so that's at least kind of what you need uh, for ranked play. Uh, in terms of uh, the infantry, it's kind of like 39th. It's all well-rounded and whatnot. You just don't get quite the availability. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, but you get your standard motor stroke, your motor stroke metas. Uh, you get your BMP2s. You don't get your BMP3s, but BMP2s uh, still very, very solid uh, infantry fighting vehicle. And you get your RPOs, so you can deal with uh, opposing infantry uh, pretty well. In terms of artillery, like we just talked about, not really going to use the Burantino and ranked. Uh, but you got your Akatsias, you got your Kavatsikas, uh, you got your just standard mortar unit. Uh, so nothing really lacking there. Uh, I used to be a big fan of TO 55s. Don't really rely upon them too much anymore. Um, but you at least get a card of T 80B. So you got your kind of medium to uh, just starting heavy tank here. Uh, very, very good against divisions that don't really have those uh, kind of heavier tanks in a T 80B. You can just use these instead of having to call out these BV uh, IZDs uh, and then just have them risk getting bombed. Wouldn't it be better to lose a T-80B than a T-80BB IZD? Uh, I agree. <laughs> but the good thing about these IZDs is that they have the better uh, missile system on them. So they actually use the Agona instead of the Cobra, which gives them that two extra penetration. Uh, if you look at the speed as well, uh, they're also just a little bit faster over that open ground. Uh, they do also have the ERA, just like the BV, same front armor. Everything else basically the same. You're paying five points more, basically, for the Agona and the speed. Um, but the other good thing is you also get three per card instead of the uh, two per card at Veteran, like the BV. Uh, so you really want to make sure to use these uh, BV ICDs. Very, very good tank. Um, so you're not you're also not lacking on tank slots here. You can bring out tons of these uh, T-80 BVs. ICDs, even the T-80Bs here. I mean, we're already at 18 tanks here, and I still have two additional slots if I really wanted them, but I feel like you probably won't need them. In terms of recon, uh, you have your recon helicopter. You can go uh, with the exceptional optics version or just the standard version. I find I'm just using the standard version, uh, just as kind of a cheap recon to fly over the line, see what my opponent has there. 
get the really good GRU unit, uh, and then you just get standard uh, Resveca squads. Uh, you can kind of choose whichever one. Uh, the Igla, very, very good. Osa, not so great. You get two cards of these Strela 10Ms, though, uh, so that's always great. Um, you also get the Kube, and you get the Tunguska. Uh, Tunguska, little, seems a little overpriced uh, for what you get. I still think it's a little too expensive. Maybe 155 points, something like that. 175 seems quite a lot. I usually just buy this, turn off this gun here, and use the surface-to-air missile, uh, mainly for that range. Uh, in terms of helicopters, uh, you got a good amount of availability here. You can get two of these uh, MI-24Ps with a 10% ECM, lots of missiles, a good Gatling gun. Um, and then you can use kind of two of these AA helicopters. Um, so just kind of two and two. I kind of like doing that. Uh, the air tab, good MiG-23 MLDs. You also get the MiG-31. Uh, MiG-31 is great and all. I just, I find, even though it has, you know, the 42% accuracy with the veteran see there, I find I'm just never really getting value out of these for the 265 points. Sure, they can be good on maps like airport, uh, you know, those longer maps uh, like Black Forest and whatnot to catch out opposing air uh, that maybe your MiG-23s uh, will struggle uh, to find if you don't have them already called out on the field. But I just find for 265 points, I don't really want to be locked in uh, to something that I can't really use against helicopters and whatnot. So that's kind of why I like using the MiG-23 MLD. Because at least if my opponent isn't using planes, as long as he's using helicopters, I at least have something else I can use these on. Unlike where I'm just kind of stuck uh, with the MiG-31. Don't really have uh, any other opportunity uh, to really use it. Uh, and I don't feel like it really is too effective at killing planes anyways. Uh, due to just some bad RNG and you really feel it sometimes. Uh, but you have all your SU-25s you can choose from. Uh, AT-1 rocket, uh, definitely the ones I'd recommend. Uh, 79 does come with the bomber uh, SU-25, but you know you, you never really see anybody use this. It's not the best, especially uh, for ranked, because it is extremely slow. It only has 5% ECM. You're not really going to get the bombs off before this guy's already routed. Uh, you do come with a seed plane. Pretty good seed plane at that. Uh, it's pretty good at dealing uh, with helicopters as well. Uh, we'll basically always leave the helicopter at 1 HP, as long as that helicopter is not like moving from side to side. And it has a clear shot. Uh, so you can do a lot of damage there, finish off some already weak helicopters, and then fire off that uh, C missile. Uh, so you do get 50% ECM here. Pretty good. Um, in terms of uh, the clusters and all that, you do get a pretty decent cluster plane, but I never really use this because it is high uh, dropping, high altitude drop. Uh, so your opponent can often just move their stuff away uh, before you actually uh, drop on top of them. Uh, in terms of where we put this on the tier list, though, uh, I think 79th is kind of a good A-tier uh, division, and I'd kind of place it right there, uh, right after uh, 5E. But with that being said, uh, let's get into 82nd Airborne. So 82nd Airborne, uh, pretty standard logistics tab. you got to rely a lot more on these uh, helicopter supplies, though. Uh, because you only get one card of the MI-35. Uh, could go the OH-58C route. I'm not really much of a user of these uh, helicopter CVs. Much rather would just have the ground Humvee instead. Uh, in terms of infantry, though, get a lot of good stuff here. Get your MP Patrol M67s. Uh, you get some pretty good Dragon Squads. Uh, you get basically all these guys already at Veteran 2, uh, which is nice. Um, your Airborne Squads are great because they have the two M240s. Um, also with the AT-4s and a 10-man strength. Uh, so that's going to do a lot of damage. Um, your 40-millimeter um, MK-19 here, grenade launcher, uh, going to be the best grenade launcher in the game. Uh, so you definitely kind of want to add this in there, uh, try and figure out a spot uh, to use that to support your infantry. Uh, and then, obviously, the engineer flash uh, going to be very good to have as well. Could go arrow rifles, put them in a Chinook because of this 12 uh, HP and the 10% ECM. Um, but air rifles in general, because they have the law, not really going to be too great behind the lines because you're not really going to catch any vehicles out uh, just because the law is so bad. Like if you have a T-80 BB coming down the road, your law is not going to be able to kill it. 
Uh, if you have a BTR, you know, if you get two hits, uh, then sure, you got it. Um, but it's, it's just going to, you're not really going to be able to catch anything out. So you basically want to use these guys as just anti-infantry units um, to get in good positions, not really as behind-the-line uh, units because they're not really going to perform too well there. Uh, and you, then you get three cards of these Totus. I don't really think you're going to use all three cards here, but it is nice to have the Totu maybe find a place to put a card there uh, and then get something uh, like... Not this one, but this uh, Airborne Engineer Leader with the AT4, uh, 12 strength, pretty good uh, command infantry squad just because of how much uh, HP they have. In terms of artillery, uh, we get these mortars, uh, the 105s, and then just the standard uh, mortar here, so nothing really uh, special there. Uh, Sheridan's never really been a fan of the Sheridan. I think for the two front armor, these guys just they die very, very quick. Uh, they pretty much get one tap by any tank. Um, and <laughs> for 60 points, you don't really want your unit just to get one tapped instantly. Uh, so it's kind of hard uh, to find value with these guys. They do get a pretty decent gun uh, for anti-infantry uh, duty. Uh, but the Shalanga, uh, not really going to be doing too much. Uh, and for 60 points, I just find they're kind of too expensive for what you get. Uh, and then M1IP, though, definitely uh, want to bring that in. Humvee Toe, also want to bring that in. Very good stealth, uh, 25 uh, penetration toe to Humvee, uh, definitely worth having these guys around uh, because you're going to need them to deal with those heavies. Uh, in terms of recon, you got your snipers, you got your LRS unit, uh, you got the Humvee AGL, uh, which is actually pretty decent. I feel like this is an okay unit for 45 points uh, for supporting infantry pushes and whatnot. Um, if you can fit it in, you know, it's good to have um, your airborne scouts, uh, kind of decide if you want the sniper or the scout. Um, just based on availability, how you're going to use them. But for, with an AT4, uh, the scouts, uh, also with the uh, avail or the uh, option to take them with the Humvee, uh, with the 50 cal, I feel like the scouts are a pretty uh, solid choice. And then you can take a card of Bradley's uh, if you have room. Uh, in terms of AA, you got your Stinger, uh, you got your Vulcan, and you got your Avenger Paris, all these being uh, forward deployable. Uh, so really good. You can set up kind of a good start. Um, with these units, like if you bring a Vulcan, then unload it when the helicopters show up so that you can uh, then target those helicopters and shred them. Uh, maybe support it with an Avenger Paris so you can rapid fire these stingers uh, as well. Uh, your opponent's likely not going to uh, want to send helicopters after your uh, early start there just because you'll have the AA with that infantry uh, to back it up and uh, keep that good position. Uh, helicopter tab, you have your Cobras, which are always nice. Uh, new unit that we haven't talked about, the ATOS. Uh, this one has the four stingers uh, with it. However, if you're facing off against MI-24 VAA, uh, you're likely going to get the short end of the stick there just because uh, two hits uh, kills you where it'll take three hits with the stinger to kill that MI-24 uh, AA. So likely don't want to uh, have these guys uh, engaging against that uh, Soviet counterpart. Um, so I don't really find the use case for this. Rather just have the Cobra. Um, but then you also have uh, your Apache options as well. Not as many Apaches as you can take in third armored, um, but you still definitely uh, want to take uh, both cards of that. Maybe even uh, this card here, just because you're going to want these to deal with those heavy tanks. Uh, in terms of air, though, uh, you got your double card of Phantoms. Um, you do have also two cards of Eagles as well, so you'll likely have air superiority uh, with this division. Kind of hard to lose it uh, with the amount of ASFs you can bring. Uh, you can also get that Thunderbolt with the rockets uh, for that early game. And then you have your AT planes, uh, just your HE bomber, uh, seed aircraft, and an LGB, uh, which I definitely would recommend taking the LGB just to deal uh, with those infantry squads or uh, that AA that you maybe spot uh, and can sneak this guy in and uh, just deal with that easily. But pretty, pretty solid uh, air tab all around. The only thing it really lacks to me is just a good bomber. You kind of have to use this LGB as your bomber uh, because this F-16 doesn't really have the best bombs. Uh, it's okay, but it doesn't really seem to kill off infantry squads, so it's going to kind of struggle there. Uh, but in terms of where we place 82nd on the tier list, uh, I think 82nd is just kind of a good uh, B-tier uh, division. I'd actually place it slightly uh, above 4th Matschutzen, but I'd place it um, kind of behind 2nd Panzer and 5th Panzer, just because 
Uh, maybe I'm not the best playing with it. Uh, maybe that has something to do with my decision to place it behind those. Uh, but I feel like for a lot of situations, I'd just rather have uh, some of the units in 5th Panzer and 2nd Panzer uh, rather than just kind of that infantry style uh, gameplay of 82nd where you capture the territory early, you try and just put toes everywhere, and then you just kind of maintain air superiority and, you know, try and move away from artillery. Um, <laughs> maybe I'm not the best at dealing with that. Uh, in games and all that, and that's why I don't like playing 82nd. Uh, but as soon as you take your foot off the gas uh, with the division like 82nd or 4th uh, and your opponent gets that artillery up, uh, it just seems like you're in a losing battle for the rest of the game, and I don't really enjoy those divisions that fall off towards the end of the game as it gets really hard to kind of hold on uh, to whatever uh, advantage uh, that you got. Uh, but when you compare it to something like 2nd Infantry, I feel like the opening for 2nd Infantry is just so much better than something uh, like 82nd can have. Um, so I feel like 2nd Infantry is kind of a little bit better at that, and that's why uh, those are kind of separated uh, up there. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into 8th. So 8th Infantry, pretty standard uh, supply tab there. Uh, in terms of uh, the actual deck composition, you got your M67s again, which we talked about how good those can be. Uh, you get your flash. Uh, what you get above third, though, is you get these ranger squads, which are very good at just holding kind of towns uh, at the start, very good in close combat distances. Uh, but the really good thing you get are these mech rifles law. Uh, you do get a card of mech rifles in third, uh, but you don't get the mech rifles law. Uh, very, very, very good infantry unit uh, because you get the three M249s. Uh, you also just get three cards of these mech rifles if you want to kind of build your deck around that as well. You still have the ability. Uh, to kind of use infantry and Blackhawks. Um, if you want to go for that highly mobile style, you have Toe 2s, you have the Ito, uh, you have Jaegers, but you're not really going to need it uh, when you have the Mech Rifles Law and the Rangers uh, and whatnot. So you don't really want to bring in that West German infantry uh, that suffers. Uh, in terms of artillery, though, good selection here. You have your heavy hitters, you have your MLRS, uh, you have your mortars, your standard M109s, uh, a lot of options there. In terms of tank tabs, uh, you have your M60s, uh, which are really good at starting out. I think for 100 points, these guys are well worth it. Uh, even though they only have the 2100 meter range, they have really good accuracy, a good penetration, and a good armor uh, compared to like a Leo 1A5 um, or a Leo 1A1 uh, in this case. I feel like uh, these M60s perform pretty, pretty well, and uh, I kind of recommend taking both cards of those. Uh, the M1 Abrams seems a little bit overpriced. Um, not the biggest fan of the M1. Um, I'd rather just take two cards of this uh, at that mid-vet and then basically, uh, you know, fill out the rest of your tanks uh, with the M1A1 there because you're going to need uh, this M1A1. You do get the GSR LSR or LRS, um, which is nice. You get your sniper unit. You get your cheap M150. Uh, if you want a high hit point recon unit, you have your Jaeger off clear. Uh, don't really take the helicopters, but you have the option to take uh, two cards of Bradley's if you really want it, because you don't have IFEs with this deck. Uh, so maybe you want at least one card of Bradley's, uh, just because these Totus are very, very strong. Uh, and this one comes with the mediocre stealth and the very good optics. Uh, A-tab, you go with the Stinger, the PVADs, uh, the I-Hawk, and the Chaparral. So a little bit longer range here, since you don't have the F-15Cs uh, and 8th. Uh, this can kind of help you deal with uh, a division like 1st that you know, it's going to uh, try and pummel you with some Harriers. Uh, you get the Cobras, which are nice. Uh, you also get the Toe Cobra, uh, which is pretty nice. So you can fit a few of these in your deck. And then when it comes to the Air Tab, uh, I like at least taking one card of Fighting Falcons to deal with opposing helicopters. Uh, sometimes you can get lucky and one pass uh, an armored helicopter with this. Uh, Vulcan also has a decent amount of ammo, so that's pretty good. I would not recommend the Cluster Plane because you're not really going to one tap. Uh, any type of tank. Sometimes the, the bombs can just like split weirdly too and you'll miss whatever you're targeting. Uh, very RNG based on if you're going to actually kill anything with this. Uh, the A10 though, I would recommend. Very, very solid plane. And the LGB uh, with the 30% ECM. Uh, this thing can uh, basically drops two LGB bombs at a time. So you can do two passes with this. Uh, very good at taking out infantry or just lightly uh, armored targets. Very, very solid uh, at that. 
And in terms of where 8th goes on the tier list, uh, I would put 8th as a solid A tier uh, division. I'd actually put them behind uh, 79th though, uh, but I think I think they are very very good. Uh, they have good infantry. You know, they have the heavy tanks, the light tanks. Uh, they have good AA. Don't have the best air tab, uh, but they still have a good air tab. And you have plenty of supply. You have good artillery. You're not really lacking uh, anything. They also have very very good strong AA. Uh, so you could argue, you know, they could be above these divisions, um, which they could. I mean, these are all these three are extremely close to me, uh, but I think I'd put them. Uh, right there. Eighth is one one of my favorite uh, divisions to play as well. Uh, but with that being said, let's uh, go into KDA. So, <laughs> I guess for this one, we'll just talk about uh, my deck for KDA, since I already kind of have a deck here built. Um, I have it named the number one worst div, so if that doesn't tell you where it's going to go, um, you know, good luck. But uh, this this one was actually kind of built for a Timmy Tim. We changed it around a little bit. But either way, I'm still just going to show this one off. Uh, but you have a good amount of supply here. Um, you obviously have a ton of supply. Uh, this is a support deck after all. In terms of infantry, uh, you want to use your OP and your Spetsnaz. Uh, that's your forward deployable infantry. The rest, you're having to rely on your uh, reservist infantry. Uh, and your Machutsen, which is still a good infantry card, uh, as well as your Pioneer Flamethrowers. Uh, you can get a Conquers, a good command unit, and the KDA Schutzen. Um, I've tried recently using the KDA Schutzen uh, kind of paired uh, with the KDA Fuhrer. And as long as you kind of keep your KDA under uh, like uh, a command infantry unit, they're actually not that bad. Uh, they're actually, they feel okay as long as you have that command uh, next to them, but the problem is you have to have the command uh, next to them, and that's quite an expensive uh, kind of outlay just to you know support some KDA squads. And if you lose that command, well, you're not getting that command back. Uh, so then you got to make sure you have plenty of commands in your deck to actually capture zones. Uh, so that can kind of snowball. Um, in terms of artillery, obviously this was built for a 10v10, uh, but you got some Malkus, you got the Napalm. Not really a fan of the Napalm grad anymore. Uh, I don't really think this thing's that great. Um, Smirch though feels okay, but I'd much rather just kind of use the Malkus, um, and maybe a mortar, something like that. Uh, maybe one Smirch, but the Napalm again, doesn't really feel that great anymore. I've tried it out. Timmy 10, uh, it just doesn't really seem to, to output that, uh, damage that you want. And it takes absolutely ages, uh, to reload. Uh, so you're not going to get much use out of it, especially in a one B one. In terms of the tank tab, you want to kind of use it around these T-55s and the AT guns. Uh, I do bring in the card of T-62Ms just because you get that long-range missile. Uh, but other than that, I mean, you got these uh, cheap uh, PT-76Bs you can bring in. You got the T-34s, but you know, all these guys just going to be able to get basically one-tapped. Um, also, they don't have the best uh, penetration, all that. So unless you can somehow just overwhelm your opponent, uh, maybe... You know, spam a bunch of T-34s, get close with some T-55s or something. Um, maybe you can make it work that way. But um, I basically just rely on the uh, T-55s and the AT guns and then the T-62 Emmet for that long-range engagements. And then a bunch of these just uh, little UAZ uh, Jeeps with the little ATGM here. In terms of recon, you at least get the G G GRU. So that's great. Uh, you get an MI-2 and then... Uh, like with fourth, uh, you get the PT-76. Pretty good for just kind of scouting all over the place. Maybe you can sneak one of these through the line, get some AA picked off. Uh, in terms of AA, Ooks, really nice to have. Uh, you can pretty much shut down uh, anybody's air with these as long as you're microing them. Uh, the Flak F SFL, uh, also pretty decent. Not going to be good at max range, uh, but if a helicopter uh, gets close to this, you are going to take it out. And it's nice not being radar. It does have quite a lot of armor on it as well, so it's going to survive against artillery and, and whatnot. Uh, so it's pretty pretty good on the survivability side. Uh, and then just basically a card of these Strellas. Uh, you can bring in Osas as well, but since you're bringing the Books, you're not really going to need the Osa. Uh, you're not really going to use these uh, ZU-23s as well because you'll just get artillery with those. In terms of helicopters, uh, the only thing worth bringing in this tab are basically the two MI-24Ps because uh, MI-8s just don't really 
feel all that great. Maybe you can make a case for the MIATB uh, because it has the Maliukas and just a good amount of rockets, but I don't really think you need it. Uh, just take the two AT2s. In terms of air, this division actually has a pretty solid air tab just because you get six of these bombers. So you can have a lot of early momentum with KDA uh, just because these bombers are going to be really hard to deal with. Your AT plane also pretty cheap. Uh, and then your cluster to help deal with those heavy tanks because you're definitely going to need something to deal with heavy tanks. Maybe you find a way to fit in uh, another AT card. Uh, but again, you're going to have to rely a lot on RNG and uh, that's not really uh, how you want to be playing the game. You don't want to rely on RNG a lot and uh, that's pretty much uh, all this air tap is going to bring you. <laughs> and it's probably going to bring you a lot of pain when the RNG doesn't go in your favor. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I don't really think KDA is the greatest division out there. It's fun to play in a 10v10. Uh, it's not the best to play in ranked. And I think it kind of deserves uh, this D tier uh, spot on its own uh, because it doesn't really excel at anything. Um, you know, you can spam infantry all day long. Uh, maybe get those bombers to uh, give you some momentum just to kind of push through the infantry. Uh, but as soon as your opponent, uh, you know, brings up some air or some AA, um, and like an IFE or two, uh, <laughs> you're really going to struggle. So uh, it, it's just kind of, it's not the best. It's not the best. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into uh, Terriel Torio Commando Sued. Or TKS, as it is also called. So TKS uh, has a pretty good supply tab, uh, just because you get this big old chunky supply helicopter has the 10% ECM to 12 uh, hit points. You just can, can bring in a lot of supply here. Uh, like I've said before, not a big fan of the West German infantry, uh, but you at least get some forward deployable green berets here to help you with the early game. Uh, you get kind of the same flame, armburst, Jaeger, airmobile squads. Uh, you get some Milan twos, but they're only available to be taken in the Super Puma, so that's quite an expensive outlay. Uh, you do get a good green beret uh, leader, uh, so this can be pretty good, uh, like a town fight or whatnot, if you're just fighting to hold a city. Um, but overall, not really a giant fan of the infantry. You at least get a ton of availability on infantry, so you can spam, spam out Jaegers uh, pretty much all day long. Uh, but your infantry is not going to feel that great besides your, your green berets uh, pretty much at the start. Uh, in terms of artillery, though, you do get a good uh, little artillery uh, piece here with the 155. You can also get the M110s as well, uh, so that's not too bad, uh, but nothing really else there uh, besides just if you want to take the mortars, uh, which this uh, mortar unit actually pretty good, uh, the Panzer Morser. In terms of the tank tab, P4 Milan, going to want to bring this. Uh, you're probably going to want to take the M48s, and I don't even know if you want to touch anything else in the tank tab because these uh, other upgraded M48s not going to do too well. In terms of recon, though, uh, you at least have the AMX-10, uh, so that can kind of double as a tank for you, uh, do a lot of damage uh, that way. Uh, definitely probably worth taking. Um, FS Jaeger B1, also very much worth taking. This would be my favorite West German infantry unit. This unit can do a lot of damage because of those 7 MP5s and the satchel charge. Very, very strong unit. Uh, definitely very, very strong at the start of the game as well. Um, other than that, though, nothing really uh, stands out here. BGS, not the best either because they have that reservist trait. Uh, and they come at the lowest vet possible at poor. Uh, so these guys will just, or girls, uh, I should say, and guys, uh, will just route uh, whenever they get fired upon. In terms of AA, we know how I feel about the Rollins. Uh, pretty much not worth it. You at least get some IHawks, though, and you get the Fliegerfaust. Uh, and then you get some cheap Bofors that maybe you can just kind of put uh, behind your lines in case... Uh, helicopter rushes imminent. Uh, maybe just kind of put one of these around your command or whatnot just to protect it. Uh, in terms of helicopters though, gazelle cannons, obviously uh, not going to be the best, but maybe you can put in a card in just to cause your opponent maybe some issues if they don't prepare uh, against the helicopters. And then you got some gazelle hots. Air tab. This is going to be uh, what you have to take in this division. The F-10 4G bomber. Uh, very, very good bomber. Uh, definitely worth taking. It's a high altitude bomber and it's, it is extremely fast, hard to deal with. It's probably the number one strength of TKS. 
Uh, whenever TKS spots a unit worth bombing, you'll see one of these come for it. And uh, it's very, very hard to shoot down as the opponent. Basically need to have an IHawk or a Kub up, or just a fast ASF in order to catch this. Uh, so the longer you keep these alive, the more value you get out of this, the better uh, the game's going to be for you. Get some helicopter hunters of your own, uh, some good ASF, uh, some AT, uh, pretty good LGB bomber. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Uh, for this type, you also get a good F4F bomber as well if you want to go that route. But I think the strength of TKS is basically just using that high altitude bomber uh, in combination with your AMX 10s and then basically just pumping out the infantry and uh, keeping that combo going. Uh, but where I would place it on the tier list, I think TKS is kind of a good B tier uh, division. I would actually uh, kind of put it in between uh, these two a bit, probably uh, just above fourth, uh, just because I think uh, the early game of TKS is really good. You also get really good infantry. You could argue it's above 82nd, uh, I think 82nd, though, can, can just control the skies and shut down TKS. Uh, so that's kind of why I, I don't really put it above there. Also, the forward deployability of uh, an airborne division would really make TKS kind of suffer. So I'd put it there. Uh, it's a solid B-tier division, though. It is pretty strong. Uh, some people can play it also extremely well. Um, won't list any names, uh, but there's uh, some very good TKS players out there. And uh, yeah, you could argue it could definitely be higher. Uh, but in terms of me playing it, it's about here. <laughs> that's about the best I can play it. It's about B quality. Uh, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into 11th ACAV. So 11th Cavalry, uh, pretty standard. Uh, basically, it's just six tab, nothing special there. In terms of the infantry tab, you're really lacking infantry slots so you got to be really careful with what you pick uh kind of what i would go with is uh you want the basically the milan uh, so you got to pay full price for that martyr 183 milan uh, then you want just kind of a cheap unit uh, you want basically some flash uh, you could argue if you want the dismount troopers or not but you're going to kind of want that at uh, just in case and then kind of for the last card i take these mech rifles law uh, because you do at least get uh, good quality infantry here. You just don't really get a lot of it. And you don't really have room for anything else. Maybe you could figure out a way to put in the arrow rifles. Uh, you know, replace the dismount troopers or replace the dragon. Um, but that's not a lot of infantry. Um, so you got to really use it carefully. But you at least get some good options there for how you want to build your deck. Uh, in terms of artillery, get uh, two selections of mortars, two selections of uh, these M109s uh, versus... The uh, West German M109, uh, which I believe the only difference really is the range. Uh, so probably just want to take this one if you want the heavy howitzer. And then you want to take uh, the German one uh, because it is 120 uh, versus that 107 millimeter. Uh, so you get a little bit more power out of uh, this mortar, and it's the same price. Uh, in terms of tank, uh, you get a lot of M1A1s. Uh, so you can at least turn on the M1A1 printer. Uh, while you're playing this division, uh, get some commands in there as well. Don't really want to worry about the CEV or the Jaguar 2. Uh, in terms of recon, you got the LRS. Uh, you got the Humvee AGL, uh, which can be pretty decent uh, if you can find a spot to fit it in. It's pretty good at just uh, kind of helping you uh, win those infantry fights as a supporting gun because uh, you don't really have a lot of support in this deck besides just your one card of IFVs here. But you have your uh, recon helicopters, which I wouldn't recommend. The one really fun unit this division, though, is the M3A2 Bradley, uh, just because this is the five hit point version, and uh, it's the only five hit point recon Bradley uh, in the game, uh, and it comes in 11th ACAV, so you definitely want to take that. You can also take a card of regular Bradleys uh, if you want. M1A1 ACAV, uh, also pretty decent. Uh, it is quite expensive, though. you got to pay 40 more uh, extra points just to have that uh, good optics, uh, but if if you kind of struggle with uh, recon play and all that, you want to have recon when you're attacking, just have an M1A1 uh, ACAV in your push, and you're pretty much good to go. Uh, AA-wise, you have your Stingers, your PVADs, your IHawks, so you're not really struggling uh, with your AA. 
uh, your helicopters. You have your Cobras. You also have this nice little Sea Knight, uh, the Widowmaker, uh, with the Totus uh, and your Hydras. Uh, so that's a really nice helicopter. You can get four of these guys uh, for just 150 points. So it's still a pretty cheap uh, helicopter, too, especially to have the Totus. Uh, and it also has 10% ECM over like a standard Tow Cobra. Uh, so you can do a lot of damage uh, with these uh, Sea Knights uh, if you play with them well. Definitely uh, worth taking. And then the Air Tab, you can get tons of these uh, Thunderbolts. Uh, you have your LGB Bomber. You have your Fighting Falcon to deal uh, with other helicopters. Uh, you have your A-10 Rocket. If you really want to bring it, it does have uh, quite a long resupply time, uh, though, because these rockets do have a lot of supply cost. Uh, so I'd probably just recommend, if you really want the A-10s, just take two cards uh, of the uh, Thunderbolt. It's probably the best bang for your buck. Um, but other than that, uh, not really anything else uh, worth taking the air tab. At least a pretty decent air tab, though. Uh, but in terms of where we rank it, uh, I think I'd put uh, 11th ACAV as a C-tier division. And it's kind of close if it's better than 7th Panzer or not, but I think you get more rounded uh, stuff in 7th Panzer. Uh, 11th ACAV, you got to play it very specifically, and it's very map-dependent on basically how your time's going to be. And I feel like 7th, uh, at least, is a lot better on a lot of the maps out there than uh, 11th ACAV would be. Um, so I don't really think it's too strong. I'd put it uh, back in the C tier. But uh, with that being said, let's get into 119th, uh, which is actually kind of growing. It's grown on me a lot recently. I used to absolutely hate this division. Uh, I used to <laughs> never want to play this division. I thought it was very, very weak. Um, never had fun with it. Just felt like I was getting absolutely clapped. Uh, decided to kind of reevaluate how I played on it. And uh, I've been having a lot of success with this one lately. It's kind of it's kind of dwarfed into my uh, my favorite division, so maybe there's a bit of bias here uh, with my rankings, uh, but we'll see uh, after I get through talking about it if you agree. So you got a good amount of supply here. Uh, you got your fast uh, BTR sixty as well. In terms of infantry tab, you get a card of the best infantry in the game, the Spetsnaz. Combine them with the OP. Uh, you get a card of your Motostrokis with the BMP one piece. Uh, you can get two cards of the Sapuri RPO. Uh, but I feel like you don't really need both. Uh, you can get away with one uh, because that gives you another RPO unit like the Spetsnaz. So then you'll have basically 10 RPO units uh, in this division. And then you can maybe, instead of uh, basically I'll build it like this. So that way you can get another card of AT. Uh, because you will find that you will struggle uh, with having infantry AT uh, in this division. Artillery though. Uh, you got some Vasilix. I do kind of like just bringing one card of these uh, to deal with opposing infantry and buildings. Uh, it also helps uh, with your infantry fights. Just basically, uh, you know, bring up the Vasilix. If your opponent counter uh, batteries these or just targets these, uh, you don't really have to bring them anymore. It's only 45 points. You're not investing a whole lot, uh, but it can really do a lot of damage to opposing infantry. Uh, your Mr. Beast also very, very good at uh, dealing with other infantry and buildings and whatnot. Uh, hitting those toe positions or those uh, Milan positions or just infantry positions in general in buildings uh, where you know your opponent has recon or something. Uh, these could do a very, very, very good job at that. Uh, they are a little expensive. Um, they're like 20 points more expensive than the competition, uh, but they're still a very good uh, artillery piece. In terms of uh, the tank tab, this is where the fun really kind of kicks off. Uh, you have your repairs for the start. Uh, you kind of want to send these out at the start, create kind of a defensive line. Um, and then you want to start bringing up uh, these T-80 BBKs, or more specifically, the T-80U, uh, which is a really solid tank, 19 front armor, uh, 9 side armor, uh, 21 pin gun. It comes with the uh, reflex, which has the 2,800 meter range and the 21 penetration. Uh, these also have the ERA, just like the T-80 uh, UD, which has that two extra front armor. Uh, but 320 points for this tank, uh, but you really feel how good it is when you're basically facing anything <laughs> that's not a T-80U on the other side, or not a Leopard 2A3. Um, anything that doesn't have that 19 front armor on the other side, you're going to be doing a lot of damage uh, to the opposing tanks. And it's really nice to kind of sit these guys out in the open, because that 2800 meter range on the reflex, 
uh, if you start hitting some of those reflex at range, you're going to be doing a lot of suppression damage and just a lot of damage in general. Um, so really, really nice once you start getting the TADU printer up uh, and you can actually support these guys. If they're not supported, you're just going to get picked off by aircraft. Uh, so you got to make sure to have AA up to support those. But um, just real quickly to go back, once you get the TADUD up, uh, you basically feel unstoppable <laughs> as long as the aircraft can't get to your TADUD. Uh, it's really hard for any other division to basically deal with this absolute beast of a tank. Uh, in terms of recon, though, you also get some good choices here with the MI-24K. A very good recon helicopter. You get the GRU, uh, which is forward deployable recon unit, which is very nice. You get the motorized Rotsvika, uh, which can really... You're going to want, basically, at least two cards of recon infantry here. Uh, maybe uh, the Rotsvika Sperry. However, I take the motorized Rotsvika just because they have the uh, RPG-22. And like I said, you're really going to feel the lack of AT. <laughs> so you definitely kind of want to have as much AT as you can muster. Uh, but yeah, something like that. Uh, in terms of AA, you kind of want the card of Strellas. Uh Maybe one or two cards of Tunguska, and then the Igla, uh, just to support those TADUs and UDs. And then Helicopter Tab, you can just go cheap with the MI-24 Rockets. Uh, I don't really feel the need to bring in the AA version, so I just kind of bring in like three uh, of these Rockets, and then maybe uh, like two of the uh, better Helicopters. And then you get the two here, so you have you know the two plus the five, that's seven Helicopters. That's a lot of Helicopters. Uh, so you're never really uh, struggling with helicopters. And you want them in this deck because you're not going to have a good front line at the start. Uh, so as long as if, if someone breaks through your front line, you can kind of send in a helicopter and then you can protect it with something like this MiG-29, which you get plenty of air superiority fighters on this deck. So if your opponent overextends uh, to kill off your helicopter after the line they just broke through and they don't have the AA up there, yet uh, to support you can just call out this mig-29 uh, deal with whatever fighter took out your helicopter and then just send another helicopter in uh, to basically hold that line until you can uh, build the defenses up to be able to then push back into that area uh, this is very much a late uh, game division but you have good asf uh, to basically help kind of control the air game uh, make sure to protect your heavy tanks on the ground uh, you also have the SU-27S. You have a good LGB bomber as well. Uh, it's not as good as MiG-27K, though, uh, just because this thing turns like an absolute brick. Um, it does have the best uh, laser-guided bomb in the game, uh, but when your, your plane gets shot down after you fire it, it's not really worth having. It's just kind of uh, 240 points down the drain, and you got to hope that you retain vision on uh, whatever you're going to fire at. But whenever it comes to placing 119th uh, on the board here, I think I'd place it right at the start of B tier as a top B tier division because it really struggles at the start of games. Uh, but if you can somewhat keep a front line together and keep your opponent just from getting too much ground against you with your forward deployable stuff, uh, and you have you know, power towards the late game. When you get the AA up, you get the, the MIGs up, uh, you get your T-80s up, then you start pushing back. Uh, you can you can have a really, really strong uh, force composition there. And it's not, because you don't have a lot of choices, it's pretty easy not to go wrong with what you're buying too. So it kind of keeps you in a pretty simple uh, headspace. Um, so I'd put it at the top of B tier. I don't think it's quite good enough to be an A tier, but I do think it is a solid uh, B tier division, but uh, let's get into 24th uh, infantry. So 24th uh, has some good supply. Uh, it does have this kind of chunky uh, M40 M548A2, uh, which gives you a little bit more supply uh, for the cost. Uh, but other than that, you get Carter Bradley commands. But I just recommend taking the Mutt uh, in terms of. Actual infantry, you got the M67 again. Military police, actually a very, very solid uh, infantry unit. They also get the nice uh, little skin now, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but you have 
you know, a good amount of firepower here, and they come at veteran. Um, so these military police are actually very, very good infantry units. Uh, I enjoy every time I use them. I don't feel like, um, you know, I'm getting cheated when I have military police out compared to, uh, like, when I have Jaegers out. <laughs> so that's always a good thing. Uh, you can go super cheap with the fire teams here and get some Bradleys um, and all that, but I feel like the penalties uh, just from being experienced poor I don't feel like these Bradleys perform too well, especially the Dragon units here don't perform well at all. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the law, so I don't really try and take these guys. I'd much rather uh, take, you know, a Fireteam AT4 uh, and a Bradley like this, or, you know, a law with the Bradley, or even the Fireteam Dragon with the Bradley. Uh, but you also have your Flash. Uh, you also have your Itos, uh, which this division is a lot about Ito spam. Uh, so you're going to want these Itos, uh, and then you can have the more maneuverable air rifle squads uh, because just like with 119th uh, you're going to struggle with infantry AT because if we look at actual AT here you know you got your M67 you got your fire team law you got a card of AT4s another card of law you don't really have any good AT your best AT is this AT4 and you only get eight uh, cards of that so well I should say just eight per card um, eight units of this uh, which is you know, not going to last you too long in a in a 40-minute game. So you're really going to feel the lack of AT. Uh, in terms of artillery, though, National Guard Howitzer, uh, pretty worth it just for being 20 points cheaper. Um, you know, you're not really going to feel the reservist trade on that. Uh, you get your MLRS, your mortars, tank tab, get your National Guard uh, M1s. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the National Guard in ones unless you're using these purely as like a defensive unit uh, because offensively, as soon as these guys get hit with something, uh, they're just going to be stunned up, stressed out, unless you have like a command unit close to them. Um, they don't really feel all that great. Um, I'd rather just go ahead and upspin, get an M1 IP. Uh, you'll feel a lot better with these M1 IPs. I do, however, recommend bringing the National Guard ITO just because you get a 20 uh, penetration toe. You get plenty of suppression there. The accuracy isn't too bad, um, especially if you up at these guys to get rid of that uh, accuracy penalty. Um, yeah, these for 50 points, very, very good unit uh, for the amount of suppression damage they do and just the penetration damage. Uh, in terms of recon, I generally like going for the scouts and the sniper. Uh, M150, very cost-efficient unit. Don't take the helicopters, but then you have the choice uh, to take some Bradleys. Um, for the recon version if you don't really take any uh, in your infantry tab. A, you got the Stinger, you got the PVEDs, you got the Chaparral. Uh, that's kind of what you want to take. You can kind of mix and match if you want to take the National Guard Stinger. Uh, it does still have that 5 HE. 40% um, accuracy, though, compared to the 60% of the regular Stinger. Uh, but it is 10 points cheaper. Uh, maybe you can spam these guys out some more. You do get four more availability as well. Uh, so there's a case to be made. It's kind of a hard decision. Uh, I just prefer uh, taking the Stinger just for that additional accuracy. Uh, in terms of the helicopter tab, you've got the Cobras, Tow Cobra, and then you get two of these National Guard Apaches, uh, which I definitely uh, recommend taking, maybe both of those, and then a card of Cobras, uh, something like that. Uh, in terms of the air tab, you've got uh, your nice bomber here. You've got your Phantom. Uh, you got both Strike Eagles, which you really want to take. Very, very nice-looking plane. Also a very, very good plane. Extremely fast, good ECM. Uh, this can take out uh, any type of heavy tank, and you get basically two runs with it. It fires two off at a time. Um, so you can basically take out two high-priority targets as long as you're not getting tagged on the first strike run, and you're not really likely to get tagged with that 40% ECM. Uh, so you definitely want to take both cards of that. And then maybe you fit in. Uh, the F-15 Seat Eagle uh, as well. But in terms of where we place uh, 24th Infantry on the tier list, I think it is actually uh, an A-tier division. I don't think it's as good as 8th, uh, but I think it's better than 2nd uh, because you do have a lot of kind of medium tanks. Uh, you have a very good Air Force. Uh, your infantry, you know, it feels good. Um... You do kind of lack AT though, uh, so you will kind of feel that. But the Strike Eagles, I mean, you're get, you're going to be able to deal with heavy tanks pretty easily. It is kind of RNG based, 
but if RNG is in your favor, uh, you're going to have a very, very uh, good day uh, with this division. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into 27th. So 27th, standard uh, logistics tab, nothing special there. Uh, infantry tab, you get nice camouflage on all your infantry units compared to other divisions. Uh, you also get this nice BMP-2 AG. Uh, this is basically just standard BMP-2, uh, but with the grenade launcher. Uh, the BMP-2D basically just has uh, the one additional side and rear armor. Uh, so take the BMP-2 AG all, all day long uh, when compared to just the standard BMP-2. You can see the difference there. It's just the grenade launcher. You're paying five extra points for a grenade launcher. Uh, definitely worth it in my opinion. You get your Metis, uh, your RPG-26, and the BTR-80, uh, Sapuri RPO, and you can get the Conqueror's M as well, uh, which comes with the tandem trait, uh, so you'll do more damage against units with ERA. Um, basically a very good all-around infantry tab. Not going to struggle too much there. Uh, you get laser guided Akatsias. Um, they are quite ex quite expensive, uh, but if you get two of these up and you're targeting heavy tanks uh, because of the precision of the shell, as long as you're uh, getting that corrected shot in recon range, you're going to destroy pretty much whatever uh, you're firing at. You have some cheaper artillery as well, uh, which can be pretty useful. I wouldn't really recommend uh, the Nonas. I don't think they're that great, um, but uh, you know you got mortars in there too if you need uh, the smoke terms of uh, the tank tab, the Sprout B, definitely worth taking uh, because of that T-80U round. Uh, they get the 23 pin, and uh, these guys can just absolutely murder uh, tanks at close range uh, if you can sneak up on something or just have them defensively. Maybe an opponent overextends, uh, hit one of these rounds, even into the front armor, uh, can do a lot of damage. BRDM2 conquers him. Uh... You know, it's the better Conqueror's M, but I still don't find myself taking these. I'd rather just have something like this and then take you know, all four cards of that and then maybe that uh, because you want all the T-80 BBs that you can have in this deck. In terms of Recon, you get the Spets Res Vecca, very good forward deployable uh, unit. Not going to do too well in CQC uh, engagements though, so you don't really want to use them for that um, because you will likely lose. Uh, but still nice to have a forward deployable unit. Uh, you can get your motorized Rosveca and a Recon BMP-2, uh, which is pretty nice. It is quite expensive, though, because uh, that will set you back 125 points. Uh, that being said, this guy, also very expensive if you get him in something like a BTR-80. Uh, so maybe downgrade to just the Gaz-66, so you can at least get 20 points of uh, back there. And then just some standard Recon for the rest. But you also have access uh, to this MI-24K, uh, which is really nice to have. In terms of AA, uh, you get a better Strela 10M, uh, the 10M3, that is. Um, so it has 10% more accuracy over the other Strela. It also has an additional uh, one point of HE to get you up to six. Uh, so you can two-tap uh, any type of armored uh, plane with this, uh, which is really nice. Um, also, just having that extra, extra accuracy uh, really going to do you a lot of favors. Uh, but it does come at 20 points more expensive. Uh, other than that, you have the Tor. Uh, not really a huge fan of the tour. I still think the aircraft range uh, needs to go up quite a bit. Um, but th it does seem quite viable against helicopters and whatnot. It's never really uh, failed me there. It's just against aircraft. It doesn't really seem to do uh, the damage uh, that I want it to for that 65% accuracy. And especially for that price. Uh, and then you just get the Tunguska. Uh, you can always just turn off the radar gun. Just use that uh, for missiles to support your T-80BBs. Uh, but again, you know, you're kind of using these Strela. 10Ms for that because uh, they're pretty good in pairs. Helicopter tab, you got uh, pretty pretty much good options here. Uh, you got your rocket uh, Heinz that I'd probably recommend and then maybe like one of those. And then plane tab, recommend this SU-17 uh, AT. Very, very good. Uh, it doesn't have the three availability like the East German ones, uh, those SU-22s, but it's still get two of these. They're still very good. I uh, highly recommend having them. I'd probably take a card of like the MLD uh, because this one's uh, really good to have. It's also better uh, than the uh, Soviet uh, version in uh, 79th and 39th. Uh, you get a better uh, little sidewinder there, uh, more accuracy on that. You also get the MiG-29, uh, which is kind of a must-take. 
And then the T8M, uh, I've tried it out. The uh, Vickers, they fire really slow. Uh, so you're never really getting value out of this. Um, it's just It feels way too expensive uh, for what you're getting. So I don't really recommend uh, taking that, at least uh, currently, unless they do some type of change uh, there. But in terms of where we place it on the tier list, uh, I still think it's a pretty solid division. Um, but I don't think it's all that great. Um, I'd probably put it at A tier, maybe slightly above 24th, slightly behind. It kind of lives somewhere in this area. I still think it's better than 2nd Infantry um, because it does have some good infantry options. You still get T80 BVs. Um, you get some good options in the plane tab, uh, but I feel like it's not quite uh, as up there in A tier, but I, I still feel like it's better uh, than some of these divisions uh, in B tier uh, would be. Uh, but with that being said, let's get into uh, Berlin Command. So Berlin Command, uh, I have, I've had a lot of fun with this division. I do like this division. Uh, it has a good supply tab, uh, plenty of CV options there for your choosing. Probably just want to go uh, with a P4 PC or a Rover. Um, in terms of infantry, you have your really cost-efficient MP patrols. Uh, you have a lot of reservist uh, type of units uh, with these security traits uh, that you can kind of throw around, test the lines. I'm a big fan of the RAF rifles uh, because they come at trained uh, instead of experienced poor. Uh, this is kind of how I wish KDA would be, and it would feel a lot better. Uh, so these RAF rifles feel really great for a 12-string squad. They don't have any AT or anything, but they're actually pretty good at dealing with opposing infantry. Uh, you have the flash. Uh, you have... Berlin Light Rifles, which are really nice with the recoilless rifles. The one weakness, though, is that they fire off these rounds very, very quickly, and then you got to have supply close, or else you're just you're going to really feel the pain of not being able to fire that recoilless rifle when the IFEs start coming towards you. Um, and then also, it's pretty cool as you get the Berlin Light Rifles with just the Law. Um, so, you know, just the 10-man strength squad. Uh, they're pretty decent. Again, Law's not that great. Um, so you kind of want to have some AT around these Berlin Light Rifles, maybe like a squad of actual rifles uh, with the Law 80, uh, just to kind of support uh, both of these squads here. But the Berlin Light Rifles, very, very good squad uh, with that RCL. Uh, definitely good at taking out opposing infantry. Just got to make sure you have supply close. Uh, and then you get the Separatist Flames with the flamethrowers, and then you can get a Milan 2 uh, unit, which is pretty nice to have as well. Some good command options in there also. Uh, in terms of artillery, um, you get the 155 millimeter, a really, really nice artillery piece, good price. Uh, you can basically pick out a mortar that you want. I'd recommend taking one of the more mobility ones, especially this one, uh, since it is such a cheaper mortar. Uh, it can fire off rounds very, very quickly as well. In terms of uh, the tank tab, I'm not really a fan of the Rardens because they only have one armor all around. And for 40 points, uh, they're just going to get killed off pretty quickly against opposing IFEs, uh, so I don't really think they're worth it. Uh, I do think, uh, you know, a card of Rover Milan or P4 Milan are very much worth it, though. And you kind of want to get a card of AMX 30Bs. Uh, the Humvee Toe, very much worth it because you have the 25 uh, pin here. So instead of taking, like, two cards of something here, maybe pick one card of this and then make sure to bring in that uh, Toe 2 Humvee. And then you want to bring in the Chieftain. Uh, you want to bring in your M1 IP. And then you probably want to bring in a card of uh, both the commands as well, because uh, these are all the medium uh, to heavy tanks that you'll be able to get in this division. Definitely want to make sure to use them. Uh, in terms of recon, we got the Fox. We've already talked about that. Uh, the PSSEB. Um, this is a, just a good kind of all-around recon squad. Really good at close range with those MP5s. You got the AT4s. You also got the satchel charges. Uh, not a lot of hit points, but still a very, very a good kind of squad uh, to start out with. Uh, SCK, also not that bad. Uh, they do come with the shock trait, just 40 points, uh, but you get the MP583 with them. Um, you know, just a good kind of starting out squad to give you an infantry advantage. Other than that, not really uh, any other choices I'd recommend in here. In terms of air or AA, uh, recommend the Stinger, Javelin LML to deal with those helicopters. Definitely recommend uh, having the Mistral and then uh, the PVATs as well. You don't have any long-range AA in this division, so that's where you're going to struggle. Uh, but you at least have a good amount of good uh, man pads uh, that you can kind of throw around the map. 
Uh, in terms of the helicopter tab, you do have the gazelle rockets, uh, which can help you out in the opener. You also have a card of hell arms, uh, which are just good to have. And then a air tab, um, a lot of Harriers kind of, you know, use the bombers and the cluster at the start. But again, you don't really have anything to support these guys because you don't have any ASF. Uh, but you do have the Nighthawk, a really stealthy uh, LGB bomber. Definitely uh, want to be using this guy, especially early on before your opponent can kind of get all that AA up. Uh, but you only want to use it on high priority targets. It does only drop one bomb. Uh, per run too so you can use it to you know hit two uh, pretty juicy targets uh, wherever you want um, but if your opponent has that radar AA and they have those fighters uh, you generally don't want to stay around for that second strike because after that first strike the uh, the aircraft is going to be trying to hunt you down uh, so you kind of want to be very careful with these but you can't get two of them uh, which is pretty nice uh, and then the Mirage HE uh, a lot of bombs here but I wouldn't recommend bringing this it doesn't really seem too effective uh, same thing with the seed. You can drop bombs and have the seed missile, but not really a huge fan of uh, that plane either. But in terms of where we place it on the tier list, uh, I still think it's you know a pretty pretty decent uh, division. Um, I'd probably put it like around here. I think it's better than fourth. I don't think it's better than TKS because. Um, like in that specific matchup, you'd just be getting absolutely destroyed by those high altitude bombers, and there's not really anything you can do about it. Um, but I still think it's a solid B tier division. It has a lot of good infantry. It has pretty good medium tanks. Uh, it's just that that AA tab's really going to start to hurt you, uh, especially when you're playing a division like TKS. Um, and then heavy tanks can really hurt you pretty hard. Uh, you do have the Nighthawks that deal with that, but if their division has those ASFs, um, and that radar AA, uh, your Nighthawks aren't really going to be too survivable. So I think uh, B tier is a pretty suitable spot for it. And lastly, we have uh, Berliner Gruppergang. So we'll get into that. So the Berliner Gruppergang um, has a good amount of supply. Uh, you also have access to the MI-26s, so you have supply for days. Uh, in this division, which is really nice if we just skip ahead to the artillery tab. Uh, you can get two cards of Burantino, which you can actually use in this division. I uh, wouldn't use two cards, but maybe one. Um, you also have access to the Urigan, which you can just kind of fire off all game. Uh, you have the D20s that you can use. Uh, you have plenty of mortar options and whatnot, so you have a good amount of artillery. Um, so you, you can definitely support that uh, with the supply tab in this division, which is always nice. In terms of infantry, it has one of the best infantry tabs uh, in the game, lots of choices, lots of ways uh, that you can really build this one around. Uh, you have access to uh, meta squads here. You have access to the Jaeger metas. Uh, so you can have a lot of metas uh, squads just kind of flying around. You have the FS Jaeger uh, for kind of the forward deploy, uh, really good infantry. Uh, you have access to Superi RPO. However, I'd recommend the Wachschutzen. Uh, also have the RPO, but they come at that max vet which is really important when it comes to the aim time of these RPO units. So if you look at the aim time, uh, it's 1.8 seconds, whereas let's say you're facing somebody with just some regular Saperi, it's going to take them two seconds uh, to aim. So these wax shoots are going to get their shots off uh, before the Saperi RPO. Uh, so you're pretty much going to win that battle uh, every single time just because you're being able to fire first, stun up their uh, Superior RPO, and then they're basically able to fire at you, but you've already done all the suppression damage on them, so they may miss some shots then. Um, and also, your guys are at this elite uh, experience level. They also come with the security and the resolute trait. So, Wax shoots and uh, very, very good. Wouldn't really recommend uh, the Stoss version, though. I think you just want the one with the RPO. But you also have access to a lot of these SPW 70s with the shoots and uh, BTR. Very uh, good unit as well. You can bring in the Conquerors, or you can go uh, for the other ATGM unit here uh, with the forward deployable, uh, basically, uh, you know, 16-pin uh, ATGM. Very, very good. Um, if you want BMPs, you have them with the, uh, the Motor Strokey. Uh, you can even get the grenade launcher version. However, these don't have the smoke, uh, so I, I feel like I'd rather just have the mod shoots in. Uh, then the regular motor stroke, you also get that extra veterancy 
and you also get that resolute trait. So I feel like it's more worth it uh, to go that path. Uh, you have Pioneer AGI as well, um, but I feel like you just want both cards of the Wax Shoots and, and then just ignore uh, both of these. And we've already talked about Artillery, so if we go to the Tank tab, one of the cool things here is that you get these pack MT-12s, uh, but they come with a really fast transport compared to other divisions. Uh, so you can actually get these to the front line very, very quickly, uh, which is very, very nice. Uh, instead of just having to send them in like the MT-12, uh, LB, like other divisions, you just get them in this T813, arrive at the front very fast. Uh, you can get some T55s, but I think you want to go the heavy tank route here. Uh, get these T80Bs, get the T64 BVs, and the BVK, uh, and then you're having a very nice day uh, dealing with uh, opponents' uh, heavy tanks on the other side. In terms of recon, uh, you don't have a recon helicopter, which can be an issue. Uh, you also don't really, it just doesn't, the recon tab just feels kind of lacking in this division. You don't really have a unit that you're absolutely in love with. Uh, you do have the Grinzer, though, 7-man team for 40 points. Uh, Price-wise, you do love this unit, uh, but it doesn't have AT, uh, so you will kind of feel that. You can maybe go for the Flamethrower as well, but you have the Wax Shoots in uh, to basically fill that role, so you don't really need the Flamethrower. And then you have the Matsurad's Vecca, which have your AT, uh, but again, you can't really bring them in like a Ural or just like a Gaz, so uh, you kind of have to pay a little premium for there, so maybe not as worth it. Uh, and then the off clear your other unit with AT, but not the best AT. Uh, so maybe you just kind of want to use your recon uh, more in the more of a, not a frontline unit <laughs> of engaging and just kind of hide them around. Uh, in terms of AA, though, you do get some forward deployable Strellas. So if you want to, you know, send those FS Jaeger Metis uh, up all the way, just make sure you have them with the forward deployable AA. You have your Igla, two cards of Strella 10M. Uh, you have a Shilka, a Beriusa, uh, but I'd kind of go the Kube uh, or the Buk route. Uh, that way you can really shut down uh, opponent's air. Uh, in terms of helicopters, you're going to want to take both cards of these MI-24 VPs with the 20% ECM and the 16 Kokens. Uh, in terms of air, I kind of like taking uh, the MiG HE. I like bringing in uh, the Cluster. I like trying to fit in this rocket plane because infantry out in the open, this thing's going to absolutely... Uh, just destroy those, and then you kind of want to bring in uh, the AT plane. You don't have any ASF, uh, so that's kind of why you, why you want to bring in the Kubes and the Books, uh, because it's going to be really hard for you to deal with other planes. I would not recommend uh, bringing the IG, MiG-23 ML, but all your other planes here, pretty cost-efficient at dealing with things, uh, going to do a good job. And uh, that brings us to our final placement here of Berliner Grupperung. Uh, which I think is a very solid E-tier division. I think it goes right behind 119th, uh, just because I think uh, maybe it's my bias of just having a little bit uh, more fun with 119th recently, uh, but I still have a lot of fun with the Berliner Group Rung, but not having the ASF uh, going to hurt you a little bit. Uh, you don't really have any strong IFEs. You still have the heavy tanks uh, to be able to compete. You have really good infantry. Um, you know, your air tab's okay. Uh, but I just think it lacks some of those components, really, to get it up into this uh, A-tier category. But uh, with that being said, guys, uh, my throat's definitely feeling it <laughs> from recording all this. Uh, I hope I gave you some good insights uh, for some of these divisions. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, I'll be sure to answer those. Uh, you know, tell me, tell me if I got anything extremely wrong or uh, whatnot. You know, this is kind of more catered towards my play style. Uh, what I like, just kind of how I feel in general. Obviously, it's all my opinion. Um, everyone's opinion is going to be different, uh, but I hope you can at least agree with some of the points I brought here. And hopefully, you can all agree that uh, the VDV is the strongest division in the game and that KDA is the worst. Maybe we have some common ground there. Uh, but either way, hope you guys uh, enjoyed, this enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, have a great day, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Later.